stinky, stinky, stinky. Go, Toad! Oh, he's here! Yes! Oh, he's here! Yes! yes. <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> Well, it was just a very loose idea I had of maybe doing some kind of like, I would sponsor a competition like a, on Twitch, you know, with cash prizes. It's like, you know, I could just do one that's the Concerned Ape competition or whatever, <laughs> the Stardew Valley Cup. Concerned Ape just announced a huge Stardew Valley tournament featuring the best speedrunners and biggest content creators all competing for a prize pool of over $40,000. This weekend has been a long time coming. There's never been anything like this done before in Stardew. We have a very unique bunch, I would say. Is this game hard to play? No. Um, when you play like we're about to though, yes. <laughs> Go Sandy's Candies. We are gonna destroy the competition. Let's do this. So that's like super cool. I'm really excited about that. Perry Cherries is gonna win. Have you guys not heard about Pam's Yams? Root for Pam's Yams, that's my team. Crocuses, crocuses, let's go. I'm super pumped. Three hours is not a lot of time. I don't think you understand. This is not an easy task. Got a few tricks up my sleeves. It's gonna be the best thing ever. A dream come true. We're ready. ready, we're doing this. Okay, 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 we can do this, we can do this. Hey, I don't know let's how to go. do it. I'm excited. Wait, I did it. My people, welcome one, welcome all to the Stardew Valley Cup, a competition of skill, teamwork, and just overall route planning and execution. I am Unsurpassable Z, and of course, I am joined in the studio by the man that you're all here to talk to and to see, Eric Concerned Ape Baroni, sole creator and developer of Stardew Valley. Eric, how are you, my guy? I'm doing great, Z. Thank you so much for having me here. This is so awesome. I'm really excited about this. It's going to be a great tournament uh, and a warm welcome to everyone out there watching today. Thank you so much for being here at this first ever Stardew Valley Cup. Yeah, and what a time it is going to be. We have 16 of the best speedrunners and biggest content creators joined in teams of four to compete for over $40,000 of cash prize offered so generously by Eric here in the call. So. Uh, Eric, man, we have got a packed schedule ahead of us, uh, and I think we'll just sort of get right into it. So uh, thank you guys, everyone, for, for joining. This is something that's super awesome, and I know that the competitors are just like beyond excited to be a part of this, to compete. Our competitors have been putting in so much work over the last two weeks. I ended up asking them how many hours they've all done in preparation for the event, and the grand total was over 700 hours of, pe of, of practice in wow. the last two weeks for this event. I mean, people have been putting work in as if it's a part-time job, full-time job, and for good reason. I mean, they want to show that they have what it takes to be considered some of the best Stardew Valley players. You were even telling me that uh, they've discovered some new uh, speedrunning strats that were never known before. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really that's so cool, cool, too. Uh -huh. It's This challenge has really stretched people in a lot of different ways to really sort of, you know, make them think outside the box, and uh, that is just a really cool thing it was a byproduct of this competition that I didn't uh, I didn't see coming. So, yeah. Hey, guys, let's meet our competitors here. Uh, I've got a couple of graphics that will show to, uh, to just get us to meet some of these teams. Like I said, there's four teams. And so first up, let's meet Sandy's Candies. Sandy's Candies is led by The Habu. He is a speedrunner who has been playing since February of 2016. Uh, Habu has his favorite villager as Shane, and he said that his favorite crop is not blueberries, of all things. Don't know where that hate comes from for blueberries. Uh, his quote when asked, why is Team Sandy's going to win? He said, Team Sandy's Candies is going to win because yes. So thank you, Habu, for that in-depth analysis of your team's talent. Up next, we have Brandigan, by the way, has been playing since November of 2017. His favorite villager is Abigail, and his favorite crop are hot peppers. He says that Team Sandy's Candies is going to win because it's not about winning. It's about the friends that we made along the way, wide people happy. Thank you, Brandigan. Very wholesome of you. 
Also on this team, we have Lil Simzy. She has been playing since December of 2016. Her favorite villager is Harvey, and her favorite crop are strawberries. She says the Team Sandy's Candies is going to win because Habu is on it. LOL. I don't know if the man needed any more of an ego boost, but there it is coming from Simzy. You heard it here first. And finally on this team is Fuzzerino joining us all the way from Sydney, Australia. She's been playing since November of 2020, and her favorite villager is Krobus. Don't tell Krobus's crocuses that that's the case. Her favorite crop are the potatoes and starfruit, of course. And what she had to say about Team Sandy's Candies is that they are going to win because each streamer on her team is absolutely amazing at their Stardew Valley knowledge, and they will all be able to bring something different to the table. So Sandy's Candies looking fantastic going into this competition. Eric, we have uh, Pierre's Cherries next. Do you want to take it away and uh, introduce us to some of these people? Sure. Uh, so leading uh, Pierre's Cherries is Cordite. They've been playing Stardew since April 2016. Uh, their favorite villager is Morris. Favorite crop is uh, ancient fruit slash star fruit. I guess the uh, high value stuff, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, and they say that Team Pieri's Cherries is going to win because we're going to hit the 2% for an extra potato. Yeah, so when you first tweeted out about the competition, someone said, imagine losing a competitive $40,000 tournament because you didn't hit the 2% chance to get an extra potato on the harvest. And that has been quite the talk of these competitors over the last two weeks. So, Cordite. Yeah, it might come down to something like that. <laughs> you never know. We'll find out soon. You never know. It is amazing how much, when you have a deep understanding of the game, how like little luck there actually is in winning. Like it's it is really crazy, and I'm I'm sure you guys will get to see that over the next few hours. Uh, next up on Pieri's Cherries is Wallagug. Did I say that right? Yes. Uh, playing Stardew since April 2016. Uh, favorite villager is Leah. Favorite crop is potatoes. And they say that Team Pieri's Cherries is going to win because we have a mix of mix oh, sorry. maxing. Sorry, min maxing. Is that maxing. a typo? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> a mix of min maxing and slightly more casual players. So we pretty much have every base covered. Very nice. Uh, next up is Mr. Penguin Panda. He's been playing Stardew since December 2020. Favorite villager is Alex. Favorite crop is ancient fruit. And he says that Team Pieri's Cherries is going to win because we have three cats, half a penguin, and half a panda. Yeah, something I didn't realize, Cordite's profile picture and Wallagug's profile picture are both cats. And then our last competitor here, Le Chaton, uh, that is French for little kitten. So uh, between the three cats on the team and the half penguin and half panda, that's where they get that from. That, that does seem very auspicious. <laughs> okay, little Chaton. As, I don't know if I said that right, has been playing Stardew since December 2016. Uh, her favorite villager is George. Her favorite crop are coffee beans. And she says that Team Pieri's Cherries is going to win because we have three cats. Oh wait, she said the same thing. <laughs> she did. I'm not sure if, uh, if Pieri's okay. coordinated their winning quote or not, but hey, the, the three cats, half a panda and a half penguin must just be that powerful. <laughs> Sounds like it. Yeah. All right, hey, next up, let's meet Team Pam's Yams. This team is led by Piano Addict, who has been playing since December of 2019. Same time I started, actually. And yet he's so much better than I am. His favorite villager of all people is the Island Trader. His favorite crop are Sweet Jam Berries. And what he had to say was that Team Pam's Yams is going to win because of the spirit of our Lord and Savior Yoba living within all of us. So thank you, Piano, for the, uh, the very religious words there. They're seeking Yoba's blessing. Huh? That's right, yeah. Uh, that, good strat. It is, it good really strat. is. <laughs> also on this team is Albino Liger, who has been playing since May of 2018. His favorite villager is Linus, and his favorite crop is the pumpkin. Team Pam's Yams is going to win because we plan to have fun and try our best, as that's all anyone can ever do. How sweet is that, Eric? That's very sweet. So sweet. And coasting immediately off of the momentum of how sweet that is, is Shawnee Dew. Shawnee Dew has been playing since March of 2016, and his favorite villager is Robin. Now, if you notice, his favorite crop is blueberries, exclamation uh, point. That is a direct jab at Habu, saying not blueberries as his favorite crop. 
So he had to say uh, the most aggressive of our winning quotes. So Team Pam's Yams is going to win because how do the other teams expect to get to the desert without Pam's bus? Have fun walking to the desert. Why don't you count those steps, Habu? Uh, obviously oh, wow. making, a, <laughs> making a little... Sounds like we have a rivalry uh, <laughs> brewing. Shawnee is willing to start a rivalry with anyone that crosses his path. <laughs> Oh man, so yeah, anyway, that's uh, that's great stuff from Shawnee. And then the last person on this team is Matthew McCleskey, who has been playing since February of 2016. His favorite villager is Abigail, and his favorite crop are the key beans. Uh, he is playing for Team Pam's Yams, of course, and they are going to win because of the camaraderie and willpower that their team shares. So, very cool. That is Team Pam's Yams. And why don't you take us through our last team? All right, the uh, final team is uh, Krobus's Crocuses, led by King Nublet. And uh, he's been playing Stardew Valley since August 2018. Favorite villager is Pierre. Uh, favorite crop are tea leaves. And he says that teams, Team Krobus's Crocuses is going to win because we are the bestest team. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Next up is Blade, playing Stardew since February 2018. Favorite villager, Mr. I'm not going to say it because then people <laughs> will know how I pronounce that. Here, I'll say I pronounce it key. So Mr. Key, there you go. You can keep it okay. going. <laughs> Favorite crop is anything giant. Um, and I hope we see some giant crops today. That'd be fun. And uh, he says that Team Crobus's Crocuses is going to win because my RNG bending sword is sharp. Very nice. Interesting. Blade, of course, known for digging into the code and really understanding this game on a deep level. Maybe he's literally talking about a, a certain sword. Oh, my. With, if, that he with, found when in it's in your game. inventory or something, <laughs> yeah. Um, Sharky Games, up next. Playing Stardew since May 2016. Favorite villager is Jody. Favorite crop is the strawberry. And they say that Team Krobus's Crocuses is going to win because we have Krobus in our team name. Yeah, Krobus is a huge fan favorite right there, so definitely oh, yeah. uh, definitely a viable reason why you think your team might win. And Everyone loves Krobus. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and then last up on uh, Team Krobus is Therm, playing Stardew since October 2016. Favorite villager is Krobus, very fitting. Favorite crop is the green bean. And they say that Team Krobus's Crocuses is going to win because although I have zero redeeming qualities <laughs> as a teammate skill-wise, my general presence is the X factor that'll put us over the edge. Wow. What a guy. What a guy. And what a group of competitors that we have. Man, Eric, we're going to have a bunch of chances to talk through who we think is going to win, who we think you know has the best strategy, and talk about the players when we're into the competition. But for now, I want to uh, actually get a chance to meet some of these competitors as well. And so, uh, real quick, just before we do that, I will say if at any point you want some more information on the competition, as in how it's structured, what the challenges are, or if you want links to every person who's streaming, literally every competitor right now is streaming their own perspective live. So you can type exclamation point info in the chat, and a link will come up to a Google Doc that has all of that. A brief description of the competition, uh, a video that describes all the challenges, and the link to both uh, individual streams of the people that are playing, but also multi-Twitch links. So if you want to watch the entire perspectives of a single team at once, then you can do that. So uh, yeah, that's what we got. So we're actually going to hop in for some interviews with some of these players now at this time. Uh, we're going to meet some of them and just sort of see what's going on in their head right now. Uh, the first person, and I should probably confirm with this person that they're ready. Uh, I'll do that real quick. Uh, we're going to hop in with Fuzzerino, and we're going to get to know her a little bit and uh, sort of what her strategy is and just sort of uh, ask a couple of questions to her. Uh, I'll also clarify just uh, as a little behind the scenes sort of look into this, because these players know this game inside and out, literally to the point I feel like I know this game really well. They were asking me questions the last two weeks. Are we allowed to do this? Can we do that? I had no idea the depth at which they understand this game, even all the way down to like a coding level, right? And so to make it easier for you guys to follow along and to also just kind of keep it uh, vanilla to the, the Stardew Valley experience that you're probably familiar with. We have uh, not allowed outside tools like predictors. A predictor is something that you can put in the game seed and predict a lot of what's going to go on and you know you can know a lot of things about the game. So we are pretty much just doing a strictly vanilla gameplay. So 
uh, it should be really interesting and it should be uh, easy to follow along with. These, these teams have such a great route planned out. I'm so excited to see it all in action. I mean, I've been keeping up with these teams for the last couple of weeks and uh, yeah, it's, it's just absolutely great. Uh, yeah. I'm sure they know more about the game than I do. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, you did the uh, the maze the last time you were on my stream, and you ended up winning that, even over Habu, who's you know a speedrunner known I, I for that. I thought we tied. I thought so we tied down we, to the millisecond. We did. We ended up doing a recount, and you were the official winner of that. We ended up. We realized you got into the cave about two seconds faster than Habu did, but you had a full okay. inventory from running around and picking up all the stuff from the statues and everything. And so, uh, after retiming it, we realized that you actually were the fastest person. I'll take uh, it. Yeah. So, we're going to hop in now with Fuzzerino for a quick little interview. I have not actually gotten confirmation from her, so we're going to drag her in and see if she is ready uh, at this time. So, let me go ahead and drag her up, if Discord cooperates with me. I'm dragging her through every individual channel. There we go. Hey, Fuzz, are you there? Hello, hello, how are we? Hello, we are Hi great. There. Fuzz, thank you for uh, for joining us. Fuzz is a representative of Team Sandy's Candies. And uh, Fuzz, I want to know right now, joining us from Sydney, Australia, what time is it right now? <laughs> it is 2.16 a.m., so oh uh, do gosh. that with me if I sound kind of tired. <laughs> and you just got up right now, right? Uh, about an hour ago. So it was kind of weird telling my parents like, hey, I'm going to be awake, I mean, asleep at 8 p.m. So they're like, 8 p.m.? I'm like, yes, yes, 8 p.m. Yeah, so uh, did you drink any coffee or any tea this morning to get you energized? I've got my green tea at the moment. I feel like coffee is going to like bring me up too much. So I've got my green tea to keep me alive. Well, you'll make Why? friends with uh, Caroline and Harvey pretty easily with, with drinks like that at your disposal. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Now, Fuzz, I want to ask you also, as one of the people who really hadn't played Stardew Valley at a competitive level before this, uh, what was the experience like trying to learn things like animation canceling and just preparing for this tournament in general? Honestly, it's been uh, both a fun and, you know, exciting experience, but also nerve wracking at the same time. So Habu and Brandigan are both the speedrunners in my team and they know an amount, like a, a crazy amount of detail in Stardew. So it, to them, it was easy just learning things like animation counseling or, you know, let's sleep for this day and do this. But like as a casual person, I'd be like, but but this day I could be doing something with it or animation counseling, how is that going to save time? So it was both daunting, but exciting at the same time because I was learning something new, which is always something that I love about Stardew. You know, every day I'm learning something new from my, you know, from my chat and whatnot. So it was both daunting and exciting for sure. Well, that is awesome. And so guys, when you're watching this competition today and you see Fuzzerino absolutely killing it out there, just know that with enough practice, that could be you as well. So Fuzz, thank you very much for joining us. Good luck in the competition and we will uh, see you soon in action. Definitely. Take care, guys. Thank you so much. Of Good course. luck. Thank you. All right. Next up, we have a representative from Team Pieri's Cherries. Uh, it is a little guy that you may know by the name of Wallagug. So he has been playing like for a while, like we talked about, and uh, he just makes really awesome content. And so we're going to bring him in right now. Wallagug, how's it going, my guy? It's going. It's going. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Hey, so one of the things that I wanted to ask you, uh, this is a reference to a video that you posted recently. Are you playing yeah. on four monitors right now? I am not, unfortunately. My family wanted the monitors back, but I would if I could. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that video, right? I think you hooked up Stardew on four different monitors so you were super zoomed out you literally walked into town from the bus stop and could see clint's already right <laughs> yeah i could see pretty much the entire farm on the standard layout it was pretty yeah. awesome that was a really uh really funny sort of look you got in there and it didn't look that different and then you zoomed out so <laughs> yeah. yeah it was pretty bad honestly to play on but yeah <laughs> cool. and uh, i'll also ask how does it feel to be the youngest competitor right how old are you uh, i'm 16 yeah tell us about that um it feels about the same except my my teammates did make fun of me a little bit <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's like you know go do your homework stuff like that. <laughs> stuff like that you know oh it's all in uh in good fun i'm sure yes of course <laughs> all right well uh i will also ask i actually forgot to ask fuzz this but i'm sure she would have said she's incredibly confident i want to know how confident are you 
we think we've got a pretty good strat. Well, we've been practicing a ton, so I, I think we've I think we've got a pretty solid chance. So yeah. Alrighty. Love to hear it. While ago, good luck, my man. Get back in there with your team and do your final planning. Thank you very much. See you later. Best of luck. Thank you. All right. Uh, next up on the list, we have a guy by the name of Shawnee Dew joining us from Pam's Yams. So let me go ahead and drag him up in here. There we go. All right. He's deafened right now, so I got to at him, make sure that he actually knows that he's in this chat. Um, and I also actually at this time to give players enough time to prepare their farm I'm going to give them the seed behind the scenes right now. So that'll give me a chance to do okay. that Oh, I'm here. Hello. Shawnee. Hello. What is up my guy? How are hello, you doing? Hello. Hi So Shawnee dude, thank you for joining us here uh, from Pam's Yams. You had a very aggressive winning statement But we love to see a little bit of a uh, competition coming out from you. <laughs> it's all in good fun. It's all in good fun. Of no course. Disrespect. Of course. So I want to ask, um, <laughs> as your, sort of your claim to fame for this competition is uh, you, you have a pretty decent following on TikTok. And a lot of that comes from the fact that you look a lot like Harvey. So <laughs> uh, do you think that looking like Harvey will tempt you into including him in your route at all? I actually tried to route it in by my team, but they were very against it. <laughs> um, because obviously there's points for dancing at the flower dance with a bachelor and also dating a bachelor. And I asked if we could do it for Harvey. I was like, it's easy. His favorite gives coffee. We could route it in. And everyone was very against it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you had to shoot your shot. Um, I had to try. <laughs> So yeah, I also want to talk to you specifically, all of our teams practiced a ton, but I know Pam's Yams, I think the first and second day after the contest and the challenges were announced, you guys played for hours at a time. So why don't you yeah. tell us a little bit about your practice schedule? Um, we practiced a lot <laughs> um, because we were, we just really tried to refine our strategy. And I think we've worked a lot on our animation canceling because that's what we want to get more than anything else. Um, with this challenge, with these 50 point challenges that you guys have thrown in, I think that you need a lot of flexibility in your strategy. So you want to have your skills as refined as possible. I guess we were practicing for like six to eight hours every night this week. That is crazy. Yeah, full time job. Eric, yeah. how, how do, let me let me interrupt the interview real quick to ask Eric, how does that feel? You know, just <laughs> as the creator. I mean, it feels good. I'm glad that uh, people are taking it so seriously. I think it's going to make it a really fun and exciting competition. Yeah. But yeah, it is crazy that I created this thing and then people are basically treating it like a full-time job now. It yeah. is. It's worth every second. Very awesome. And then Shawnee, of course, I'll just ask you, how confident are you in Pam's Yams? <laughs> I am so confident in my teammate. Um, Albino Liger has won two Twitch rival competitions already, so he's been down this route before. He he knows what's up, um, and we have practiced so long with our team that we're like in this flow where we understand each other so well. Um, so I think we have this like ESP sort of thing going on, so I think that's going to lead us to victory. Awesome. Well, good luck to you guys. I'll let you get back to your team. Thank you very much, yes, Sean. Thank you so much yeah, good luck. Thank you for bringing me in. Yes, thank you, Eric. Of course, and our last person that we're going to interview now is the man with the RNG bending sword himself. It is uh, none other than Blade. So Blade's claim to fame, for those that don't know, is a... Actually, I can I can let him talk about it just real briefly. Uh, Blade, why don't you tell us about your predictor? Ah, uh, my predictor is the <laughs> thing that predicts things about the game. Um, a lot of things in this game, RNG, a lot of things are based on a seed. And you can plug that in that can tell you things like where giant crops will grow what you're going to get from um, fish ponds where ladders are even forage around the map even billboard quests there's a um, calico jack cans as well there's, there's a long list of things that can be predicted that i cannot use during the cup yeah <laughs> now blade is very good at this game he knows it inside and out routing is one of your strong suits and just coming up with what the actual strategies will be and so uh yeah i think even without your predictor you are still a fierce competitor uh, who just knows a ton about this game so uh yeah hey blade i also want to ask you then uh what as as a in your professional opinion i guess we can say what percentage of the overall challenges do you think teams will be able to complete so there's over a thousand points up for grabs oh uh, that is a tough one I, I put a number down and that is 50 to 80 percent 50 to 80 all right 
Love that. Yeah, I, uh, I was kind of shooting for that, like, you know, half to two thirds of the challenges. But you guys are so good at this game, it's so hard to know what you can accomplish, especially <laughs> with such incentives as, uh, as being in the cup. So uh, the last question I'll ask then is how confident are you in your team? Cautiously optimistic. Cautiously optimistic. Oh, man. Hey, also, yeah, I guess this wasn't something I was planning on asking you, but tell us a little bit about your experience. I didn't do this to your team on purpose, uh, but just with time zones in general. Uh, we've got me in New Zealand. It's currently 4.30 a.m. We've got Sharky in the UK, and for him it's 5.30 p.m. We've got King in, um, in the, I think it's Canada. He'll, he'll um, kill me if I get that wrong. That's right. Yeah. And his time... Cool. His time right now is... I want to say... 10 a.m.? Yeah, that's right. And then we've got Therm in America, who is currently uh, midday. Yeah. So that's a wide range <laughs> of time zones. It's made aligning practice times a bit difficult. Yeah, but I think you guys have killed the preparation from what I've seen, and I think you guys have a lot to offer. So, Blade, best of luck, my friends, and I can't wait to see what your team does. Awesome. Thank you, Z. All right, thanks. Like. Thank you. All right. Uh, Eric, let's talk a little bit just real quickly about uh, using a seed right now. We've decided that each of the teams are going to have a specific seed that they all start on, uh, but that was not revealed to them until just a few minutes ago for the purposes of keeping everyone on the same farm, but also uh, we wanted to, you know, keep it as random as possible and not be able to, you know, plan too much stuff out. So tell us about right, the seed so, reason. Yeah. Okay, well, just to explain a little bit what the seed even means, some people might not be aware, but it's, uh, it's basically a value that determines what kind of um, random events will happen and they'll be consistent. So we're trying to make sure as much as possible that it's a fair competition. So if everyone has the same seed, then for example, you know, on the first day or on every day, the like uh, little spots that, you know, the little wiggle thing in the dirt <laughs> will appear in the same spot for everyone. So we're, we're trying to keep it as uh, fair as possible. And the seed we're using is actually the same seed as the uh, group farm that I was playing. I tweeted about it and uh, on Unsurpassable Z's channel, we actually went and I showed it off to him and his viewers. So people are using the exact same seed that we used for that. Yeah. So it's a little personal touch. Yeah. Do you mind if I reveal that seed to just the general people so that if they want to play on the same farm as Concerned Ape? No, okay. not at all. All right. So that seed, just for those that are curious, is 243-749-714. So that's, uh, that's what you guys need to know for that uh, in case you're interested. And uh, yeah. Hey, we have about two minutes now until our competitors get into the challenge. How are you feeling about this? What uh, what are you most looking forward to? I'm just looking forward to seeing, you know, what kind of strategies they come up with, uh, seeing the, actually the, the more casual players, seeing how well they can grapple with animation canceling and all of these kind of uh, high level things. You know, like when you and I tried to speed run on your stream, you know, I was kind of pathetic at it because there's actually, you have to stay very focused. It's not, Stardew seems like a very casual and simple game, but in order to play at a high level like this, you have to stay extremely focused and you have to do everything right. Every millisecond counts. Yeah, absolutely. It really does. And uh, we're going to get to see that in this competition today. So it should be a really cool experience. And uh, we are going to hop on first uh, with Habu in just a little bit here. But I'm going to give our competitors a countdown and then they are going to get into it. So, uh, yeah. Uh, is there anything else I wanted to cover? Yeah, there were a couple of polls running in the chat, guys, of course, throughout this competition. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of polls running at the top of the Twitch chat if you want to answer those for fun. Uh, there's also emotes for each of the teams if you want to spam the team that you you know are supporting. Uh, you can do that. And uh, yeah, it should be a really fun time. So... We are just about to get into it now. I'm looking. 12.30 has just hit the clock, so I'm going to count down in this Discord channel for them now to let them know that it is just about time to go. Three, two, one, and go. And we are going to switch over to watch first the Habu. Here he is. 
So our players are going to be off now. And man, Eric, they have routed out this, this beginning part so efficiently. I mean, they have oh, this first this. <laughs> day. So many people blessing the run in Haboo's chat right now as well. Putting his um, bed right next to the door. Yeah. So, of course, the uh, the moving the bed strat available as of Stardew Valley 1.5, which uh, has <laughs> shaken speed. Revolutionized, yeah. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. I mean, how does it feel to be such a huge part of such a massive movement by allowing them to move the bed? <laughs> It, I mean, I love moving the bed. I, I typically move my bed right next to the door when I play, too. Well, I realized when I played this game casually a long time ago, I would pass out just before I got to my bed, and then I moved it close to the door so that wouldn't happen. But then I would just wait a little bit longer to start heading home, and so I would just pass <laughs> out right outside. So, so yeah, we can so, see... Uh, I guess uh, uh, yeah. an interesting aspect of this first day is they, they probably really want to find a piece of clay somewhere, don't you think? Yeah, some of our teams are going to be uh, doing something called clay farming. I don't know if uh, Sandy's Candies is going to be doing that in particular, uh, but clay farming is basically once you've found one piece of clay, you can dig in a certain order that will allow you to dig up a bunch of clay, just back to back to back, and uh, people will use that to make a lot of money. So uh, Sandy's Candies here opting not to go with that strategy, but uh, they are immediately planting all their parsnip seeds, clearing out a large area, and uh, and just getting right into it. I know another thing that Sandy's Candies has done is they've actually color-coded themselves, so that way everyone knows who everyone is. So Habu has been red for every practice run, uh, you know, etc. I'm not sure who the other <laughs> what the other colors are, but that has helped so them I, out. So let me uh, explain to the audience what about this animation yes, canceling. Please. Because not everyone might know what that is. Um, you might be noticing that people are watering and using their tools extremely quickly, a lot quicker than you would normally in the game. Um, the reason for that is that when I made Stardew Valley, I added in this little like combination of keys that uh, causes whatever animation your character is doing to stop immediately. And I just put it in for debug reasons, like so that I could test things out. Like if, if a character or if the farmer was like stuck in a pose I could press this combination it would stop it so that I could like you know continue testing out the game and then I forgot to take it out so it ended up in the <laughs> final game and it's like I, I forget exactly what it is it's like control like pause P or something like that yeah that's not exactly what it is but it's something obscure like that but anyway people discovered it and they started using it in speed runs because it allows you to if you hit the button just right you can end the tool animation um, right after it takes effect, but before it would normally end, right? So it allows you to really quickly use your tools. Um, so what these people do is they, I think they map it to like certain like mouse buttons. Uh, they still mm -hmm. have to press, I think, multiple keys at, at once. But if you practice it, you can get it down. It's really a timing thing. If you get the timing off, then you might cancel the animation before the actual tool takes effect and you've just wasted extra time. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's Habu has described it as being very easy to learn, but very difficult to be really good with. And I would absolutely back that up. I think, you know, if you get your rebinds down within, you know, maybe an hour of practicing, you can do it. But it takes hundreds of hours to get it to a point where you, you know, are really consistent with it. And so I also want to explain just generally uh, what a lot of these teams are going to be doing, and we'll see when we hop on board. A lot of these teams have recognized, despite my best efforts to make this not a money-based competition, money is just so huge in this game. And so I think a big picture idea of what a lot of these teams are going to do is they're going to spend the first part of this competition uh, preparing for a lot of completion completing of the challenges at the very end. And so um, in the beginning here, you know, some people may be asking if you've only played regularly, why are they skipping the days? Well, their main goal is to grow these parsnips, and so they'll go out, water the parsnips, and then immediately go to bed, and then it's the next day. And so by skipping days, that's a huge strategy to get further into seasons. That that will just allow them to grow crops super quick relative, like in, as far as real time goes, and uh, advance further into the competition. So yeah. Uh, this is Habu, and I want to also, let's see who else we can hop in with here for a second. Uh, so their team is, is heading into the mines right now. An early mine rush is, is sort of the strategy that this team is going with over here with uh, Sandy's Candies. But let's, uh, let's hop on with another team right now. 
one from Pam's Yams, and as you can see, Shawnee Do here is who we're watching, and he is absolutely rocking the Harvey cosplay right now. I mean, we talked about nice. how he looks like him, and uh, this is this is what it looks like in action. <laughs> So yeah, uh, Pam's Yams, of course, clearing out a lot of space on the farm, taking a little bit more time here. I think originally their goal was to do a little bit of hardcore clay farming. Uh, we might have missed out on that, unfortunately, but right now you can see this is this is probably more typical of what a normal person looks like animation canceling. <laughs> and uh, honestly, he's doing it better than I do right now. So um, still absolutely faster, though. So Eric, talk to us a little bit about the beach farm. All of our competitors are playing on the beach farm, which is regarded as, as one of the hardest farms to play on. Uh, just give us a little behind the scenes about some of your thoughts when making this. Uh, the beach farm, well, I mean, one of the big things about it is that the ground looks different. <laughs> that was one of the big uh, draws is like, you know, a lot of people complain about that big, that mustard yellow uh, dirt. So I thought it would be a fun opportunity to have a, you know, a different color that you're staring at the whole game. Yeah. Um, but I also, you know, the main gimmick around the, I wouldn't, I mean, I don't want to call it a gimmick, but the main thing about the beach farm is that you can't use sprinklers, which I personally thought was kind of fun because it reminds me a little bit more of like the classic Harvest Moon games where you have to water everything by hand. Um, and like sprinklers, you know, in Stardew Valley, once you get sprinklers, it's like you never water again. It's yeah. fully automated, which, you know, that's part of Stardew Valley. But I also just uh, kind of appreciate the hand watering approach. So this gives you kind of an opportunity to do that um, in a way that's like kind of officially sanctioned by the game. And you get like, uh, I think this farm might have the most space of any farm, not necessarily the most farmable land, but it's like. I think it's the biggest map it is of any huge, of the farms. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm actually curious why everyone chose this farm for... Oh, this uh, is actually something that was required. So I, I'm forcing oh, I them see, to I play see. on the beach farm because I thought it would be the most interesting and uh, stretch our players the most. You know, precisely yeah, well, it, because of the, the sprinklers that you mentioned. Yeah, I'm on board. I mean, it's, uh, it's the newest farm in the game, so it's kind of fun to highlight it. Yeah, it absolutely is. Hey, let's hop on with another team now. This is uh, Cordite's perspective from Pierre's Cherries. And so uh, we'll see how he's doing right now. They are also doing a little bit of Mines Russian. Which is really cool here. So, uh, yeah, you can see his perspective. His team is uh, is trying to make their way low into the mines. Oops, sorry about that right here. Yeah, his so team Z, is... Uh, what, yeah. What challenge do you think people will uh, achieve first? The very first challenge. Ah. Yeah, it's, it's really tough to know. I tried to give challenges that weren't all, you know, just at the very ends where they would just, you know, play for two and a half hours before they could complete anything. And so we have some easier ones like, you know, upgrade a tool. I would consider that one of the easier ones, you know, upgrade a tool to copper. Um, you know, also there's some really early secrets like uh, obtain the boat painting. And so you get that from fishing on the beach farm. You can get that from day one. But I think a lot of teams have actually decided uh, partially because, I'll remind you guys, every half an hour, we're going to be introducing another secret challenge that the competitors did not know ahead of time. And so when we introduce those challenges, they have until the rest of the competition to complete that challenge. And so I think a lot of people are sort of just preparing themselves for the first part, and it's just a common strategy that just sort of naturally occurred. They're spending a lot of time preparing, and then at the very end, uh, they're going to go through and do just like this mad rush of challenges, probably in the last, you know, half an hour to one hour. Did we uh, listen in to some of the teams, see what they're saying? Yeah, absolutely. If you want to uh, listen in right now to Pieri's Cherries, we can uh, hop on in there and hear what uh, Cordite and friends are saying. Let's, uh, let's do it. Hopper? Okay, let's do this top one here. One, okay. Oh, sorry, one, two, my bad. Three hit. Okay, I'll copy roll and get this top one. One, two, three hit. That's fine, that's fine. Um, we're still doing fine. Copper's not an issue. Yeah, copper's not an issue. Someone get that coal. Okay. Got it. Let's copper, one, copper, two, three hit. Okay. Um, okay. Oh my, oh, I misclicked. Dude, my mouse keeps double clicking. Okay, cool. Yeah, don't, don't I know. Like, my don't I know. My mouse double clicked. My mouse double clicked. It's fine, it's fine. Oh, can I get the stone, I guess? Oh, no, it doesn't matter. Yeah, don't, don't worry about the stone too much. No. 
Uh, lot of copper prep. Copper we have. All right, let's get it. One, two, yeah, three. Yeah, you can hit. just prep. Oh, that's okay. I don't know exactly how much we have because you guys probably are holding some. I have twenty. I have twenty. Twenty-three. Uh, I'm on. I'm on twenty-four right now, waiting for you guys. Okay, so it's around uh, sixty that we have on us. Oh, not there's a freebie on the far left side. Nice. Uh, there's a ton of freebies by the way, like on all the floors. You okay, should be able uh, to get down to twenty-four without breaking a rock. Well, yeah, of course. You uh, yes. And don't mind rocks on 24. There's a ladder on the far left side, which is really annoying. Uh, oh. Someone want to drop, you drop your copper to me at some point? Okay, I'll uh, do don't that. break rock. Or, uh, okay, drop crates. your copper to me. Copper dropped. Uh, right side, right side, guys. Crates, 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 right crates, crates, yeah. crates. Maybe we got a glow ring, that would be nice. Okay, yes. uh, okay. one, two, three, start hitting. Yeah, that's good pretty job. good. I've got the key uh, here the hardwood. Yep, just run to the far left side. Nice. There's a ladder. If your inventory is getting full, um, I'll take the copper. I dropped, there's copper right there you just picked up. Yeah, I have I have quartz, so if you have quartz, give it to me. Are you guys free mining copper now, or...? Yeah, so yeah, these uh, these teams go in hard in the mines. Have you guys ever seen the mines done quite this efficiently? This was a, a huge part of uh, how these teams ended up practicing, for sure. Um, it, there's some common strategies. Uh, Eric, when you made this game, did you ever consider people four-player mine flying through to level, you know, 60 on the first day? No, not at all. <laughs> And so I want to uh, just sort of explain a couple of strategies here with mining before we switch away from Cordite's point of view. Um, just general big picture ideas, you'll see a lot of teams doing this. Uh, animation canceling will be huge because it allows you to just break a bunch of rocks super quickly. Uh, another thing is the biggest enemy that you're going to face is not your time, but your energy. And so you'll see a lot of the teams like Pierre's Cherries here grew a bunch of parsnips uh, so that they would have energy that they could need to get through to the end of the day. And they are also going to take advantage of something that uh, is just a byproduct of, of playing in multiplayer. When multiple people break a rock at the same time, uh, it will give you two of that item. And so maybe not so big of a deal here on these earlier levels, but once they get to the iron levels, you're going to see a lot of teams all gathering up. And then they're going to say, okay, three, two, one, and they're all going to hit the rock at the same time. And then that's going to effectively multiply the amount of iron that they get by four. Let's, uh, let's hop in now with another uh, player of ours we have from a team that we have not represented yet. We've got uh, Mr. Blade. We talked to him in the intro. So let's see what his team is up to right now. Blade's team also uh, in the mines now a lot. I think this will be a, a pretty common strategy where you can sort of uh, see, you know, all this iron and copper and being able to upgrade tools. Something that's just helpful to have earlier on. I think, so uh, see, I'm, yeah. I'm curious, do you have any uh, personal favorite team or a team that you think is most likely to win this competition? Yeah, what a great question. And, and one that I've been thinking about for just, I mean, the last two weeks. It is so tough to tell. I mean, it, it has really all balanced out. It's, it's really amazing how evenly skilled these teams are. I mean, everyone has given the route and their plan the exact same amount of effort and thought and everything that has gone into it for, you know, the last two weeks. And then on top of that, every team has very talented players and, you know, they're good leaders. It, it's really hard to tell. I, I actually think that I'm unable to pick someone that I think is the obvious front runner at this time. I, I think each team like has their own uh, unique powers or, or uh, unique advantages. Um, but yeah, well, it, it's, it's tough. And uh, there, there's a lot of uh, world record holders in the competition, right? That's right, yeah. All sorts of uh, records. Habu being the one who's completed the community center faster than anyone. I bet a lot of, uh, of more casual players watching didn't realize that the community center world record is two and a half hours from a fresh farm. Hey, Habu has completed the entire community center by getting everything himself in two and a half hours. So it's amazing, you know, when you know this game well and you have a great plan and you execute on it well, just how efficiently you can play. Yeah, a lot of people saying, excuse me, how? <laughs> Very cool. I'm going to see if I can uh, hop in here with one of our YouTube point of view people, one of our guys streaming on YouTube. Uh, this will be from a point of view that we actually 
just saw. So let me go ahead and pull this up real quick. Actually, I'll have to do this behind the scenes. Um, yeah, Eric, why don't you talk to us a little about um, just, do you know, I'm not actually sure if you remember at this point now, it's been so long since you coded it. Do you remember how like ladders work in the mines at all? Um, I think it's, okay, yeah, it has been a while. Uh, if I recall correctly, the, the more rocks there are on a map, you know, each rock has a lower chance of spawning a ladder. And then as, you know, you remo start removing the rocks, like I'm pretty sure uh, the the each rock that you break, the chance goes up, you know, with the each fewer rock that exists on the level, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure what those percentages look like or um, whether that's all randomized or not, you know? So I was under the impression that it was randomized, right? And you're absolutely right. Every time you break a ladder, a chance of finding a ladder goes a little bit higher every time, as well as when you kill a monster, it's just a flat, I think one in eight chance that you find a ladder from them. Um, but Blade and his team, unfortunately you can't see on his stream because I didn't want to stress him out with having to worry about stream stuff while he's competing, but he has on a second monitor right now, he has every floor layout and a grid pattern. So this is just as good as like two Photoshop layers overlaid on top of each other. So that way he has the whole level and this grid and he can slide the grid around until it matches up with where it needs to go. And I, I tried my absolute best to understand it. You're gonna have to ask Blade after this competition if you're curious in it, but he has- oh, what, does the, yeah. what does the grid reveal? It so, reveals yeah. where- So that overall grid has ladder locations on it. And so if a ladder location ever matches up with where one of the rocks are, you will get a ladder there. And so what Blade's able to do is when they get to a new floor, he looks over at his second monitor and he kind of takes a good look at the floor. His other teammates are breaking rocks like normal, but if he can see, all right, there's a ladder right there, then he'll call that out to his team and they can go right to it. And it should allow them to significantly speed up, particularly the later portions of the mines here. Jeez, I'm not sure how he does that. I am not either, Eric, and that is going to be a common theme of today. Absolutely. I, I know that there's a lot of cases where the random number generator, uh, basically due to, you know, random number generators on computers aren't perfectly random. They're what's called pseudo-random. Basically, there is an underlying pattern, but a, a good random number generator is so... The pattern is, like, hidden because it's very, you know... It would be very difficult to discover that pattern. But uh, I think there's actually like some issue with the random number generator that Stardew uses where there is kind of a obvious pattern that emerges in some <laughs> cases. Um, it might actually be that I just coded it poorly, but uh, that's where you'll see these things where there'll be these kind of like, that's what like, that's how people do clay farming, for example. Like you find one piece of clay and then if you dig like three tiles to the right, like one tile up or something like that, there will always be another clay there. And then yeah. you can keep doing that and you have this whole pattern that emerges. Yeah. So I'm sure he's, he's doing something like that where there's some kind of anchor point that he must be finding. And then he knows that based off that anchor point, the ladder will always be you know offset by a certain amount from that. I think that's exactly right. I think that's exactly what he's doing. And it's it's amazing. I mean, he's... He's also got, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but he has figured out the RNG of the traveling cart. Uh, I told you about this a little bit last night when we were talking, but you know, he, for this competition, has independent of the game seed figured out if you go to the traveling cart on the first Friday and the first Sunday, and you look at what item is in the first row, it will tell you everything that will ever be in the cart. It's just amazing. Like, I mean, that's his strong suit. He does this, like, a lot of speedrunning techniques come from blade and his research into the game yeah so blade is kind of the mastermind he comes up with all the strats but then we have the habu which is, he executes the strats faster than anyone else yeah he absolutely so. does yeah that's uh again just talking about players strengths let's check in with habu's team actually uh let's let's hop on in with fuzzerino right now let me switch on over to her point of view here And uh, yeah, so it looks like their team is out of the mines now. I know uh, one of their initial goals was to sort of rush to level 80. A lot of teams opting to do that, actually. Let me 
pull this over here. So yeah, it's uh, it's amazing. So I think the way that Sandy's Candies has chosen to operate after talking to them a little bit uh, was each person kind of has a general role that they're going for. And so I think if I remember correctly, Sandy's Candies is working towards one big day at the end of the competition where they're going to do a lot of their you know point gathering like we've said a lot of teams are doing. So in that time, Brandigan is going to be responsible for a lot of the fishing based tasks, right? So he's spent a lot of the last two weeks learning about fishing, actually practicing fishing at a low level because it's really hard. You know, one of the challenges I think is catch an octopus or something like that. And so to be able to catch an octopus at level one is not an easy task. So he's been practicing that, uh, learning the best strategy, figuring out where to go. And then he's kind of like their designated fisher, you know? Uh, Simsy yeah. is spending a lot of her time going to try to date Shane. Shane is the easiest NPC to date because he has an early birthday and so you can get to him before the flower dance and you can dance with him there. He has a really easily loved gift, which is the hot pepper. Uh, so Shane, she's going for him. Uh, Habu is doing a lot of mining sort of stuff. It's just really cool to see how they've sort of delegated these tasks. Yeah, but, that's one yeah. aspect to this that I find really interesting is the teamwork aspect uh, especially because the teams have a combination of these you know absolute min max speedrunner type of people and then more casual players so you know it'll be it's interesting to see how they will coordinate and uh, work together um, that's a big part of what you know we'll discovering which team will be the winner yeah absolutely and it is so beyond just which you know, which team is led by the best speedrunner, right? It is so dependent on the strategy and, and how these teams end up working together uh, that it's it's really something special. Let's, uh, let's hop back on board here with Pam's Yams uh, in one second. Let's go here to Matt McCleskey and let's, uh, let's take a look at how he's handling things. They're also in the mines. I think this is Matt's first stream ever. Uh, you may recognize Matt's face generally from his animations that he does. Have you seen any of these animations, Eric? I have. Uh, yeah, I've, I've been watching them recently. They're really <laughs> funny. They are so, so funny. I mean, he <laughs> he takes uh, an animation style that was popularized by a guy named Joel Haver. Uh, and it is sort of you draw onto a video. You sort of trace over yourself and make yourself, you know, look animated in that way. And then you use a program that will take that drawing and extrapolate it to all the other frames and it's it's i think just the perfect blend of looks really cool but also kind of scuffed in that it just yeah i i think it's it's so funny to to check out yeah the the one where he's uh, fishing with willie is pretty hilarious yeah <laughs> and i realized here actually let me uh let's go back to fuzz just for one second as i can clean up this view a little bit better for you guys So yeah, what, uh, what, what do you think? So I have a couple of challenges that are based on players' ability to um, go to the, the events and win. Like I think win the egg festival is one, which actually had a lot of routing. There were all sorts of screenshots of like who's going to get which eggs um, and you know win the ice fishing contest, all sorts of stuff. So um, do you have a, a favorite uh, event, I guess? I don't remember. I don't think I asked you that last time. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, favorite event? Um, I mean, I kind of like the uh, egg hunt. I think the egg hunt is pretty fun. Yeah, I always thought that was one of my favorites as well. Let's go ahead and uh, hop back on board with Matt McCleskey here just for a second. So do we know if anyone's achieved any challenges yet? Yeah, that's a great question. So at any point, if you want to, and Eric, I actually have a lot of like backend stuff going on on my side. So maybe you can be responsible for uh, keeping up with some of the scores here. Uh, we have, if you type exclamation point info again in the chat, not everyone needs to do it, just one person. There's a link that has uh, links to their, their scoring sheets as well. So you guys should be able to see those at any time. And if you want to know, uh, you know, if we get caught up and it's hard to keep track of the scoring, uh, you can check that out as well. 
So yeah, Wait, I one thing. Yeah. Well, Z, when you said my favorite event, did you mean like just festival in general or yeah, actual so. event like the egg? Okay, well, if it's actual festival in general, then it's probably the Moonlight Jellies. Oh, uh, I did ask you that. That's right. Yeah. Okay, I remember you saying that. Yeah, that is that is such and a cool event. Very closely tied, perhaps, to the night market. Yeah. I just like, I like that nighttime beach vibe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Hey, I've got a, a couple of fun facts about some of our competitors. They were asked ahead of time to provide a couple of cool facts about themselves, and I want to read one from Matt McCleskey now that I thought was kind of fun. Uh, he said that if he wasn't adverse to daily manual labor and if he wasn't a city boy, then he would be a farmer in real life. And he says that's why he plays Stardew. So he gets all that, that good farming energy without having to do any of the actual, you know, heavy lifting. <laughs> All right, it is uh, almost time for our first secret challenge. Four minutes now. Don't let me forget about that because they'll be keeping an eye on it and I don't want to let that time slip past us. Uh, but teams seem to be off to a, a pretty good start. It seems like everyone knows exactly what they should be doing. Everyone's Everyone looks like they're executing pretty well. Let's see who else we can uh, check in with. Which team have we not been with for a little bit? We haven't been with uh, Pieri's Cherries for a little bit. How about them? Let's hop on with Lee Chat in just a second here. Yeah, I actually, uh, I didn't even realize that you could lose the egg hunt for a while. Like, I think just doing it, I, I had gotten enough eggs to beat Abigail every time until we did a multiplayer farm with, you know, 20 people. And so we said, all right, three, two, one, go. And everyone got one egg and then we were out. And so then we said, yeah. they're like, oh, come on. Did anyone get two on our farm? And they were like, Abigail. We were, what? We didn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> this is the biggest uh, twist of the century. All right, let's, uh, let's hop in here with good old Lee Chat. Let's see how she is handling the competition. Again, just going through the mines here. Now our, our players are at a, a lower level now. Oops, here, I gotta pop this out. Our players are at a, a lower level now. They're getting into these ice levels. These are where, you know, now you cannot break the rocks with one pick swing. It takes three. And so this really all of a sudden goes from being pretty easy to progress through the mines to taking a lot of energy. Uh, you can see as they start to struggle, they'll be scarfing parsnips down. Do you know if there's any... Uh record that's tracked for how many eggs you can pick up at the egg festival oh i do know that uh i do not have that record but there was a route developed by a guy named underscore 76 and he ended up doing it with a tas playthrough so he had a computer automatically put in the inputs and he was able to collect 18 eggs in wow. a single run 18 and so that is still at this point the theoretical highest number and so when you do that 18 egg route, there's only four free tiles of movement, which sounds like a lot until you walk four tiles in this game and realize that's like, you know, half a second. And so you have to like perfectly walk in directly straight paths and grab the eggs from as far away as you can. And you have maybe half a second of wiggle room. But it was done uh, by an actual person. Sun Deco was able to achieve 18 eggs. I have 17 myself, but as... A long way off was from, from 18. 17 by hand or with a tool assisted? Oh, that was uh, by hand. It took me like okay. two hours to do. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was able to, to get that to 17. Yeah. Are there videos of all this? Oh, there on are. YouTube? Of course, we'll yeah. Check it out. Underscore. Uh, Tushi has a different 17 egg route as well. Uh, Tushi wasn't available for this competition, unfortunately. Um, so Tushi has a run. I've posted both of my runs there. It's yeah, that's there's some good stuff on YouTube if you're curious and want to check those out. <laughs> Underscore is in the chat right now. He said those are rookie numbers <laughs> with my 17. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Sun Deco's here also, dude. Oh my gosh, the egg hunt champs bullying me in my own chat right now. So cool, yeah. Uh, oh, it is just about time to give that first secret challenge to our competitors. So I got to pull that up right now, actually, while we stick on with Lee Chat. And uh, yeah, they have to know 
they have to know it's it's time it's exciting this is, so this is again just in case you're unaware these are challenges that the players did not know was going to exist ahead of time and so they are just finding out about this for it that's right they might They're, have to change uh, up their entire strategy based on these they might so this first one it's now one o'clock so i'm going to uh, to post this in here and i'll hit i'll hit them with the at everyone so that they see it uh the first official secret challenge is a little bit of a slow burner it is by the end of the competition have a better high score than anyone else in Junimo Kart Endless Mode. So if only one person does it and scores 100, they'll get the 50 points. But, I mean, we got some fierce Junimo Kart competitors among us. So that's, uh, <laughs> I think that'll be interesting to see how they tackle that. If people wait until the end, if there's any battling back and forth or maybe, yeah, we'll, we'll have to see. I mean, I don't know if there's any way for them to know what everyone's uh, high score is. 50 points, that's pretty good. It is. So there's there's five of those challenges in total, and they actually end up totaling about a quarter of the overall points that you can earn. So it's it's a big deal to make sure that you prioritize these runs correctly. All right, who do we want to hop in with now? Let's uh let's take it back over to Pam's Yams with Albino Liger. So Albino Liger has one in the past two different Twitch Rivals events, and so he has definitely proven himself as someone who is fully capable of, of handling a situation like this. So we actually are going to get to see our first egg hunt. I'm glad I ended up switching over here at this time. Uh, <laughs> he's getting ready and our players have picked different routes. They have divided these eggs up evenly. I think the way it works out is everyone gets seven, except for one person gets six. There's 27 eggs in total. Uh, let, let's commentate this like it's an actual, like, huge esports, like, game five. Let's let's take it away here. Oh, just kidding, it's over. Never mind, I missed it. <laughs> I forgot. Aww. I saw them. Oh, that's embarrassing. I was like, oh, yeah, here we go, here we go. We missed it. But they did win, at least. I think that they have, uh, I think that they were able to successfully win that egg hunt so dang uh, oops Z missed it by a second Z, i had a question for you um do you know if when the teams were practicing were they streaming live to their twitch channels and stuff or were they keeping it secret so that other teams couldn't d discover what they were doing yeah it was uh it was really interesting to see how teams approached that exact problem because i think uh, a lot of teams ended up keeping their overall idea secret but I actually think it's, it's really amazing. I mean, this is totally open-ended. A challenge like this has never happened before. Yet a lot of teams kind of ended up settling in on like the same general idea. Uh, everyone is going about it in their own unique way. But I think there's just some tried and true techniques in Stardew that, that just succeed and do well. So um, to answer your question, they kept it pretty secret. Uh, there was actually, there were a few mind games going on. Pieri's Cherries was trying really hard to convince Habu that they were going to grow 2,000 potatoes. And I think even up until the competition started, Habu wasn't sure if they were going to grow those potatoes or not. Uh, they ended up not actually growing those, but it was really funny to uh, to see. I wonder if the teams have, you know, secret fifth members that are uh, spying on the other teams and their push streams and seeing what they're up to and... Mm -hmm. trying to mislead them in the chat <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it was funny to watch i mean everyone here uh, especially just over the last couple of weeks has just become such better friends as well just through this like it's it's such a great community of people uh, that's that's just really cool to see eric why don't we uh, why don't we listen in with pam zms here as well they look like they're uh, preparing their farm for a little bit of uh planting so why don't we uh, why don't we listen that's in good. with this team Five sprinklers? Okay, I'll. No, uh, I don't have my hoe. It's alright. I'm just There's gonna another Nautilus shell? Points. What the heck? And a seaweed. Alright, I'm just gonna do the beach now. Yep, go on ahead. I'm gonna craft those sprinklers for you, buddy. I'm throwing more energy in here. Okay, coming up. Challenge completion. I think it's three pros. There's. There uh, you go. Got it. Feels, it feels bad to say, but uh, here we go. So. We need 20 crops down on the bottom. It's 20 times 4, 24. Nope, that's no, not No, 20. Right. Oh, we need 20, sorry. Just did really horrid math. Uh, secret forest, yeah, 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 okay. Secret forest, Here, we I'm gonna grab, the challenge. I'm gonna grab the mushrooms. Have, so Just did we talk to the dwarf? So we can ship. 
Yeah, we did yeah, talk we to the dwarf. To the, I forgot we did dwarf. that too. Okay, cool. Yeah, we can. If uh, guys listening, in. we got oh. dwarf and eggs. Uh, oh my gosh. I'm gonna be able to craft two more sprinklers. Okay. So just, oh, make I'm space back up. just make space. I'm for setting that. the sprinkler tiles in like yeah. locations that you can fill them out and not necessarily in a real pattern. I'm going ahead and sure. turning in an so We don't have very many. Rough forest run, all good. I'm leaving the chair there. I don't care. I love you, baby. Alright. What's up, my sweet baby boy, Shane? <laughs> I'm almost to the beach. Don't watch me guzzle through this trash can. I was going to fish oh, here for a bit. to the wizard early. That's alright. Or did you didn't you didn't do didn't the CC? I didn't check. Oh right, it was rained out. It was raining. It's fine. That's okay. That can be done later. Mhm. Mm if you want to head back to the farm, go to the bus like bus entrance just to trigger it. All right. Well, we're significantly under the call of fire margin that I planned for, but it's fine. No worries. We have all the forging. So yeah, a uh, little bit of maybe trouble in paradise for Pamsiams because uh, they I heard them say, oh no, you didn't open the community center. I hope that's not too detrimental. So you can only open the community center when it's not raining, right? It's, it's one of the days after, I believe, uh, the fifth day of spring and it has to not be raining. So I guess it was raining on the day they were planning on opening the community center. A little unfortunate for them. But... It would be raining for everyone on that day, right? Because of the seed? It would be, I believe. Actually, uh, I think actually no. So I think rain, and this is maybe a little bit outside of my realm of expertise, but I think rain is dependent not just on the seed, but also on the number of steps taken two days ago. This okay. is, again, this is, this is like the level at which these players think about this game. They recognized that the number of steps that you take two days ago will determine what the weather is for today so there's a whole thing that we banned for the purposes of this competition because it can get really broken called step manipulation where players will go to sleep they'll wake up they'll take like three steps up into the headboard of their bed and they'll go back to bed and it will rain the next day and they'll go up and they'll take one step the next day and they'll go to bed and it will rain the next day and they'll do that and get rain every single day and then they never have to water any of their crops so it's uh yeah, it's it's amazing. <laughs> I, I love your face as you as you're. I've, I've never even this. heard of that one before. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, the the fun little statistic that you gave them in the casino of steps taken, that's actually used for them to be able to see like, okay, how many steps have I actually taken? Yeah, this is the kind of stuff where I probably when I was coding that, you know, this was like ten years ago, but. I was probably just like, eh, I can use steps taken because that's basically a random amount, right? It, like, yeah. no one's ever going to be able to count that and figure that out. But, you know, who it, knows? I mean, like, yeah, people figure out literally everything. Yeah, and I think for all intents and purposes, it is random, you know? For, for yeah. the average player, it is absolutely random, and, you know, no one would ever be able to use that um, to, to such a huge degree until they start breaking stuff down. Uh, to a code level. Hey, let's uh, let's hop on board with Penguin Panda now, as he is uh, playing, and let's see how he's doing right here. So again, his team back in the mines. A lot of people in the mines uh, earlier on. It's again just that common strategy. Um, this was what a lot of practice went into earlier for our competitors. I think a lot of the competitive players recognized that this would be something that would be hugely helpful in no matter what the challenges were, no matter what the runs. I think some teams even practiced. They got their teams maybe three or four days before the actual challenges were announced. And so they started practicing just doing the mines, you know, just getting to the bottom of the mines quickly, uh, just learning that good strategy. You can see now with Penguin Panda, as the entire team is uh, trying to hit the gold ore at the same time, inevitably they're going to have one person count down, say three, two, one, and then they'll all hit the rock, and you can see just how much gold they're getting. Uh, yeah, it's it's a huge thing. That is and, uh, yeah. controversial, I would say. It is. So we've allowed that because it's allowed in actual speedruns. And again, speedrunning mods went back and forth on this for a while, and they allowed that at the end of the day. And the reason being, it's too easy to do accidentally. 
You know, I think if you've played this game casually, at least I know I did, like you've duped stuff just by hitting it yeah. accidentally. So um, they realized it was kind of just too hard to to say no to. So they just they just allow it. An accidental and a deliberate. Right. But for this competition, yeah. you can actually do that with anything, right? You can dupe anything, including sprinklers. And so I had to answer the question, are we allowed to dupe sprinklers? Which uh, you can tell that's kind of a different level. You get one sprinkler and then everyone hits it at the same time and you get four of them, right? So it's like, that seems like too much. And so we're only allowing duping in the mines, um, you know, for things like rocks and minerals. Yeah, the duping is a thing that would be very difficult to fix or, you know, to change that it kind of it just has to do with the way that the underlying net code is for the game mm -hmm. um so that's probably never going to change that's yeah i i think yeah i i don't know if it's actually like the worst i think that's you know again just people can play it how they want right like if like when i play casually i don't do that because it's I, I think it's just more fun to sort of play vanilla but if you're speed running it's it's allowed yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting to leave that up to the players, which I know is a, a huge thing that you normally like to do anyway. Yeah, true. I remember when I first uh, learned about animation canceling. It was either in, I think, Tushi's channel or Habu, but I remember they were, like, afraid that I was going to get rid of it, uh. which would <laughs> completely change the speedrunning scene, and <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they would have been happy about that, but... I was just like, you know, this is, it's such an obscure thing. You're never going to just happen upon it unless you know about it. Right. By looking into um, the game code. Yeah. And if that's how people want to play and they find that fun, it's like, ultimately it's up to you as a player to choose to do that or not, you mm -hmm. know? Absolutely. As a lot of stuff is in this game. I, yeah, I don't think that's something that. You know, you need to apologize for. I think it's it's incredible that you could have. Just, I think it's just incredible that you made a game. I mean, that's I I know like very basic level stuff about coding, and I know you spent a lot of time learning. But just to make any sort of game on your own is impressive. Let alone one that I mean is highly comparable to anything that a massive company could do. You know, after years of development. So absolutely, kudos to you. I mean, yeah. You know, is anyone gonna blame you for leaving an animation canceling? I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of tough to tell who's winning at this point, right? Because we, you know, a lot of teams haven't actually decided to start going for any challenges yet. It's a lot of just preparation. And so, Eric, who do you think uh, is, is doing particularly well? Do you think there's any teams that are showing some good promise? Or uh, I know it's, it's tough to tell them we're bouncing around perspectives. Uh, I mean, I do think uh, Pam's yams are looking pretty strong right now at this early stage, but... Uh, they are doing really good here. Oh, and I realize Penguin Panda's camera has frozen. Someone should tell him about that. Oops. Uh, let's hop on with someone from the Twitch side of things. Let's see who else we want to hit up. Who have we not so, been with? Let's see. Uh, have we been to Crobus's Crocuses in a while? Ooh, They're in the mines. Sandy's not? Candies are doing the egg hunt. Oh, okay. Let's hop in with Sandy's Candies. Let's, uh, let's go okay. to the Lil Simsy cam and see her point of view of this egg hunt right now. Let me bring it up right here. It looks like we're getting there just in time. Oh, is that the end of it? Oh, I think that might oh, be the end of it. Oh, we keep just missing it. Dang, oh man. Well, good job to them. They did a, a great job finishing that <laughs> egg hunt up, I'm sure. We'll stick on with the, with Sandy's Candies here um, as, they, as they continue going for a little bit. We, uh, we, we talked about animation canceling a lot. There was a huge, a huge part of being able to animation cancel easily is rebinding your buttons because, you know, you said it's like three arbitrary keys. I think it's right shift, delete, and R. And there's just no way that you're pressing those buttons just anyway with one hand, let alone while you're also walking around and playing Stardew. So poor Simsy, I remember she was trying to learn how to animation cancel and I don't think anyone told her that you could rebind. So for the first while, she was trying to figure out how these competitive players could possibly stretch their hands across their keyboard in a way where they could hit everything. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look like she's doing the animation canceling right now. Yeah, I think uh, sometimes it's helpful, but again, sometimes it's detrimental. Like I know when I first started getting into it in the mines, you just ended up wasting so much energy and so much time that it was just super tough to, uh, to rock with. But yeah, it's you kind of yeah. got to decide, and it's also it's interesting. Like 
it's harder in the mines, I think, for a casual player because it's like you hit it once and then you're done. Hit it once and then you gotta move your mouth somewhere else. If you're cutting down like a tree, you know, that's 10 hits in a row where you don't you have to move. Kind of get in the groove. Yeah, exactly. So you may see, you know, someone like Simsy when they're cutting a tree down, they might do that. But when they're doing something like watering crops here where you have to just real quick like boom, 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 get the timing down right and move your mouse in the right spot. It, it is really hard, so. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, those little, like, little things like that, though, will might be what determine who the winner uh, is, you know, of this competition. Because, like we were saying, like, every millisecond is going to count for getting as many of these points as possible. I think another aspect in general is just being able to retain intense focus for, you know, these three hours. Yeah. You know, three hours seems like such a long time to play Stardew, and it is. I mean, I've done one speed run that was over three hours, and it's one thing to play a game, but to do, you know, three hours of uninterrupted high focus, it does actually get really tough. But, you know, at the same time, some of our competitors were saying, like, man, three hours is not a lot of time, but it's like, I, I think this is really going to push a lot of people. It'll be cool to see. So yeah, Sandy's Candies now, I know uh, from watching one of their practice runs, they have a really long period here where they're just going to be sort of hopping out, watering all of their crops, uh, while Brandigan up on the very top fishes, tries to catch some good fish, get his fishing level up, and then hop back into bed and just uh, grow a lot of these crops manually. So let's see, let's actually hop back on with Pam's Yams. I'm going to see if I can pull up uh, Piano Addict's perspective here for a second because I think that he is doing something pretty cool right now. So we'll hop on there with them. Yeah, a lot of these teams also changed their strategies up virtually at like the last second, honestly. Like a lot of teams really decided that they wanted to, uh, they, they had some last minute optimizations or they wanted to change something up or they realized they didn't have enough time in their strategy. You know, we, we keep talking about how these teams are saving all their challenges for the end. Well, it would be kind of terrible or like it would be de detrimental to your team's success if you're waiting all the way up until the very end and then all of a sudden you don't have time to do what you were looking to do. Like that would just be, yeah. be kind of rough. So um, yeah, the teams have to be careful to avoid that. And I think as a result, a lot of teams were deciding to maybe cut out some of the middle of their route, even just down until you know last night. I think Pam's Yams, don't mean to call them out, but I think they were rerouting some stuff last night. <laughs> Uh, in an attempt to to optimize themselves and to give them the best chance of actually accomplishing what they want to. Yeah, I guess there is kind of a risk versus reward element to that, to the high level strategy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, absolutely. So again, this team rocking through the mines right now, and it looks like uh, they're going for um, maybe level 60-ish, maybe uh, maybe 70 if they can get it today. A lot of teams go to level 80, and then it becomes very difficult to break rocks, right? So I think a couple of teams have this strategy where they're going to get down to mines level 80 naturally by just breaking rocks, you know, as you do. And then after that, they're going to leave for a while, save up a lot of money, and then use that money to buy stone from Robin and turn all that stone into staircases. And they're going to use that to get the rest of the way to floor 120, you know, those floor that floor 80 through 119. I think those rocks take five hits a piece, four or five hits a piece. Like it's it's pretty tough to get through. And so they're gonna staircase through that instead and uh, then do the same in the skull cavern. There's a challenge where you have to get to floor 100 in the skull cavern. I think that they're gonna try to do that too. There's so many different ways you could do all this. That's what makes this such a interesting and open-ended competition. Yeah, especially with four people, too, and figuring out, like, you know, how are we going to delegate tasks? How are we going to make sure what you're doing takes the same amount of time as what I'm doing? So do you think uh, the main reason why they're trying to get down, like, it seems like this mine rush thing is one of the top priorities for each of the teams. Is it just to get to that skull cave because there's so much, you can make so much money there, or... That could be a huge potential. It's going to be interesting to see, are they going to go to floor 100 in the Skull Cave just for the points? Or are they going to try to grab a bunch of Iridium while they're there? You know, the, the base quality pickaxe is going to be really rough to use in the Skull Cavern, but maybe some teams will buy explosive ammo 
you know, from the Adventurers Guild and use that. So it's it's going to be really interesting to see. I like I said, I tried to talk to all these teams, but they were switching stuff up even at the last minute. So it's I don't even know if if some of the teams are doing. I know what a lot of these players, night. you know, like Habu, for example. Like once you get him in the Skull Caves, like forget it. There's yeah, you know, money is no longer an issue. There's Absolutely. Like, so and I think having tons of money does open up a lot of possibilities for the team and uh, you know we'll make it a lot easier to get a lot of these points so mm -hmm. I, I could see that as a viable strategy yeah it definitely could be yeah the money is going to be a huge deal i mean money i, I tried to think of as many challenges as i could that were not money based but it's still uh, what you'll see from a lot of teams is either going really deep into the mines as, as fast as they can and, and getting money from iridium or uh, a lot of teams are also going out watering going back in and uh, and just growing a bunch of crops. And then while they're doing that, they'll harvest those crops and they'll make some preserves jars. And so then what their strategy will be is go out, water a crop, and then put one of the previous crops you've harvested in the preserves jar, go to bed. And you can, you can rack up some serious money that way. If you want to see a good example of that, I would recommend watching a Joja Mart speed run uh, because that run is pretty much just getting money. And uh, that's that's a huge strategy for that. Let's see, uh, who else can we hop in with now? Let's, uh, we're with currently Pam's Yams, I believe, right? Yeah, so we're with Pam's Yams. Who do you want to see, Eric? Um, let's, let's look. Um, we're with Pam's Yams. Uh, who have we, were we just on Sandy's Candies? We were just on Sandy's Candies. We can go to Sharky if you want. Sharky is, uh, yeah, let's is do on Crobus's Crocuses, and we haven't been with him yet. Let me pull that up over here. Here is the man of the hour. Let's get this. Uh, let's get this pulled up here. Oops. Ah. Sorry about that. Here we go. And let's get in with Sharky right here. Yeah, part of the uh, the back end side of things, it's kind of tough to uh, when people are we're, we're just pulling up their streams. If you guys couldn't tell, so I think uh, having some people on YouTube and some people on Twitch makes the switch a little awkward. But uh, Sharky's team now doing that gold duplication, and it's interesting. As I said, you know, just a couple minutes ago, that a lot of teams are going to go for that staircase approach. It looks like uh, Kerbis's Crocuses is going to be doing this more naturally. It looks like they are currently on floor ninety ish, ninety one. Um, but I also think, you see, they're heading back from the mines now, but you might also see some teams doing some gold farming where they will go to a certain level, say 91, and they will try to get as much gold as they can on that floor. And then as soon as they get that, rather than progress further down to look for more gold and waste energy and time, they'll go back up to floor zero and wait a little bit and the mines will reset and then they can go back down and they can get more gold again. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's amazing. It, it really is. Yeah. A lot of the strategy in this game is uh, just exploiting my poor coding. <laughs> I, I don't think your coding <laughs> is poor. I think, trust me, any other game that's like this too, I mean, you'll you'll see people, people will break any game. I think, all things considered, the fact that your game isn't beyond broken is, is a testament to how well you've coded it, actually. I mean, you, well, you can as long as people are having fun with it, right? That's right. <laughs> what were you gonna say? Oh, I was just gonna say, yeah, like you should you should see some games the way that that people dissect them and, and just take them to such a broken level. So it looks like Sharky is the team's dedicated fisher right now, fishing in this area, making use of the beach farm. Uh, do you remember what kind of fish you can catch here? Is it just normal ocean type of water? Uh, yeah, it's ocean fish, and I think you can also get, um, shellfish. Okay. Which is un kind of unusual to fish out, like a, a mussel or a clam. Right. <laughs> so, it's, it's one thing I'm realizing, uh, that we'll probably end up missing out on, just because there's so many points of view to keep track of. Some of my favorite challenges were, name an animal something funny. And so we'll have to we'll have to see if we can get word from someone else who's helping me behind the scenes to see if uh, teams have named anything particularly funny or just actually named the animal something funny. 
Uh, and there's also Name a Chicken Eric Baroni, which I thought was uh, oh, wow. a fun little addition. Uh, <laughs> it'd be kind of fun. Sharky's making some good use of his time up here. Let's see. Do you uh, have we given a listen in over to Pamzams yet? Actually, or sorry, uh, Crobus's Crocuses at this point. I don't believe we did yet. I think we listened into some other teams, but not Crobus's yeah, well, Crocuses. Why don't we do that? Yeah, sure, absolutely. I think they've been watered. There's some fish in there for food if people want it. I was trying to get the 50 ninja, but uh, couldn't find it on the farm. 60. Oh, dang. Hi. Yes, I have bought. bought. Yeah, how, how have you been getting 50, the 15 inch fish usually? Because usually when we practice. I get it up in, do you know when I'm at the beach? I normally get one there, but yeah. I'm not, I wasn't looking. Yeah. I wasn't looking to see what size uh, they were. So I probably didn't get it. We but... did get it. Me, I was still placing sprinklers. All right. Yeah, I probably had the 15 inch, but I just didn't check, so. <laughs> Potentially. Mod, were you chicken? Mod, Mod we got it. Yeah? <laughs> Use your imagination. Oh, we we <laughs> did get the points for the funny cat name, so. Yeah? We did? Okay, great. Okay. How, how, where are y'all seeing the live score? I can't find it. No, that that's me. Tell me one, Blade. Yep. Go, go, go. Right, we know what we've got to do, boys. There's a challenge for getting all of the Easter eggs. And we ain't gonna fail. No, no, no. Watch it be the one time that we do. These kids. <laughs> Stuff these kids. We're more and important. Then we're gonna win the Bless them. All right, let's do this. Come on, skip in, who's skip in? Come on, go, go, go. Get out of my way, Sam. I punch you. No, 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 no! Oh, dang it! You try, tried. It. Uh, you tried try it again next time, dog. I dare you. <laughs> yeah, that's Beautiful. what I thought this time. Yeah, it's a good move. It's a good play. <laughs> I expect it. This means oh. no one else is gonna get eight, and then we're all just gonna suffer. Yes. Firm didn't take my fifth one this time, boys. Did not. <laughs> Oh, yes. I dare you! I nearly, I, I nearly beat you to that you. one. <laughs> there's some, there's a, there's a missing one eighth one here, Blade. Where's this eighth one? Get it's it. the last one. We need one more. We need one more. Where's the? I got all one? mine. Oh, it's wait what? in here, in here. Grab it. No go. Oh, nice. oh. I got it. Hey, got boys, I just, I just it wanted you to feel some sense. pressure, all right? I just wanted to get that heart race in. I knew it was there all along. <laughs> and everyone gets the hat except Sharky. No, I... Oh, yeah, I got six. No. Yeah. <laughs> and I got the last one, too. What quadrant was yours, Sharky? Hey. Bottom six? Yeah, I got six. Hat party, baby. Was, was, no, and, 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 the, and the image, it was the bottom six. Yes, yes. it is, yeah. Okay, so that was your one that you were supposed to pick Yeah, yeah. Anyway. I knew it was there. I was trying to steal firms. <laughs> All right. He was trying to get mine. All right. Hats on. Hats yeah, oh, on yeah. Love that, boys. Yeah, love that. You look so amazing, okay. by the way. Okay. Girl, half to me. I really do appreciate we, it. We now know who Sharky is based on <laughs> no. not having a No. That hat looks cool. Uh, have, have these been oh, watered, okay. yeah? Okay. Yes. Okay, yes. Cool. Oh my, Eric, did you uh, did you get a chance? I know we were doing some stuff behind the scenes, but did you get a chance to see what just happened in that egg hunt? <laughs> they, uh, no, I, I missed it. I th I think I was I was also doing some stuff behind the scenes, but I think that they were they missed an egg and they had to make like a mad dash for it at the very end and they barely got it. <laughs> and I think uh, I think everyone got seven points except Sharky, so they were making fun of him for being the only one to not get the hat. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, that's. That much. If they didn't get all those eggs, then they would lose out on a, a lot of points, right? Yeah. And then they would I, have to maybe try to go for next year, but I don't know if these teams are going to be getting that far. It would have been rough for sure. Yeah. All right. Hey, let's uh, let's hop back on with the perspective of uh, King Nublet now for Team Crobus's Crocuses. And as we do that, we're also it's about time to reveal that second secret challenge. So let me go ahead and pull that up and get that ready to uh, drop on our competitors right now. So 
So no teams, as far as I know, are out of spring yet. I wasn't actually sure if any teams were going to try to, you know, sleep through the whole first year or get into a later season with potentially some more valuable crops, but a lot of teams sticking into spring here in the beginning. Okay, and the uh, the next challenge is officially live. The challenge is collect one of the following statues, HMTGF, Pinky Lemon, or the Farogamon statue. So I think some people might be asking, what does that even mean? Uh, Eric, you want to give us a little breakdown? Yeah, there are uh, three secret, ultra secret statues. <laughs> no one knows. Uh, so secret. Yeah, well, no one knows what they are, but I do. Oh, okay. They, they all have significance to me, um, and maybe they'll be revealed in the future, in the far future. Far future. Um, but uh, actually, it, there's a, a secret book in the library, or one of the secret notes, that kind of it hints how to get the statues. It doesn't tell you what they are, but it hints how to get them. But these are the three statues, and they're very obscure things, like um, bringing a... Well, maybe, I mean, obviously these people, the people playing the competition all know how to get them, right? But, you know, it's like bringing a certain obscure item to a certain obscure spot and then like checking the spot, then you'll get the statue, the secret statue. Yeah. And those items, you know, they're, they're not the hardest to get, but when you're starting from an absolutely fresh farm, it might be hard to get your hands on some of them. So we'll see if any of our players manage to both track down that item and then take it to the secret spot. They have, you know, up to three options that they can go for if they want. So uh, we, we revealed that challenge a little bit earlier in the competition to give them some time to do some hunting if they want. Expect all the teams will get that challenge. Uh, we'll see, yeah. I How many love points it is do. that worth? Uh, they're all 50. All of the secret challenges oh, wow, are okay. 50. So yeah, they are, they are big deals. I'm actually unsure uh, what Crobus' is, Crocus' is, is, what their plan is right now. I think... Uh, They've been doing a lot of stuff here on the, the farm, uh, but I haven't gotten to to check in with them too much. Looks like they're going to be gathering some wood now uh, over there, that one player on the right. And uh, they have some gold quality cauliflowers, which is very nice. Oh, and you see they've taken advantage of this area down here. So you were talking about the beach farm in general, but I don't think we talked about this spot. Yeah, this is one spot where you can play sprinklers, which... Uh... You know, so but it's a very limited area, so you kind of have to be, I guess, more strategic about what you want to automate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I wonder why they're going strawberries. I think it's probably a more profitable crop. Uh, I also the only other thing I could think of right now is that Maru, uh, I think, loves strawberries. I believe, and so True. she's one of the easier people to go for if you're trying to date them or marry them. So that might be their person if they're going for that instead of Shane. Uh, but I think it's it's probably primarily uh, because of profit and also just the fact that it regrows. So Eric, let's uh, let's hop in to that spreadsheet now. We heard there may be some issues with you guys viewing the spreadsheets because there's so many people all trying to watch it at the same time. I don't think Google Docs was built for that. Um, but right now, the updated score, just so that you guys know, uh, and keep in mind, a lot of these teams are sort of saving their energy for these these big point days towards the end of the competition right now pieri's cherries has completed collect every egg in the egg hunt and they have also completed let's see they have 30 points in total they've also completed reach level 50 in the mines and they also got five points for hanging up boat in your home so that's that secret painting that is available on the beach farm uh do you see what crobus's crocuses has gotten so far Let's see. Crobus's crocuses have gotten a collect every egg at the egg hunt. Uh, 15 points for that. 10 points for talking to the dwarf. Really? They've talked to the dwarf already? Yeah. <laughs> Does that mean talking to him in his so, language? Or? So that's actually just talk to the dwarf, even if he's oh, speaking okay. a bunch of gibberish. <laughs> All right. Well, that one's actually pretty easy to get then. Um, mm. 10 points for reaching level 50 of the mines. And five points for naming their pet something funny. We're going to have to see what they did there. Yeah, I think... Um, and, yeah, go ahead, sorry. And another five points for completing a help wanted quest. So with a total of 45 points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, Krobus's Crocuses. And then Pam's Yams is right now, as far as points are concerned, in first place with 65. So they have collected every egg in the egg hunt. They have talked to the dwarf. 
They reached level 50 in the mines. They also sold a fire quartz, which they probably got from their lower levels there in the mines. They named their pet something funny, which again, we'll need uh, an update on what that is. I think one of them, I got news, I think Crobus's Crocus has named their pet Sir Passable Z, <laughs> I think is what they named that one. Uh, and then we also have Enter the Secret Woods. They did that pretty early on and they hung up Joja wallpaper in their house for a grand total of 65. And then yeah. uh, do you see Sandy's Candies there? Sandy's Candies, uh, they've finished the boiler room already for 10 points, collected every egg for 15, reached level 50 of the mines for 10, uh, caught a fish that was exactly 15 inches long for another 10 points, um, named their pet something funny, and that gives them a total of 50 points. Yeah, that catch a fish, the hardest part about that, the catch a fish that's exactly 15 inches long, the hardest part about that by far is I told them that they are responsible for noticing that the fish was 15 inches long. So I think a lot of them were like getting into the groove of things and then had the potential to miss it, but it looks like they were on top of things. So very good, very good. Uh, let's hop back oh. in uh, with Sandy's Candies here with Brandigan, by the way. Sandy's Candy is currently in second place. Although at this early stage of the competition, it's really anyone's game. It really is, yeah. Okay, so we have uh, the team name, or sorry, the, the pet name for Sandy's Candies was Habobo, <laughs> which was a, a reference to one of my videos from a while ago uh, where someone thought that was what Habu's name was. Oh man, Sandy's Candies has uh, has had a, an interesting practice schedule as well. I think they had a couple of people who had, you know, done very little running before. And uh, like we talked to Fuzz as well, and we, we talked about Simsy. So yeah, it's it's cool to see. I, as far as I can tell, at least uh, just poking in every once in a while, it seems like their run's going pretty decent. <laughs> I think Brandon just waved to us. <laughs> Let's uh, let's read through another fun fact that we have from Branding, and let's see uh, let's see what he has to offer here. Um, we've got so many of them. I feel like we should just post these publicly after, because I don't I doubt we're going to be able to get through all this list, and they are pretty funny. Um, so Brandon is, is best known for one of his videos that blew up a while ago, and I actually think Eric, you commented on this video. I think um, he did a whole slime farming series where he looked in, again to the game code just out of curiosity uh, and trying to see if he realized that any slime that had certain RGB values would always give a diamond. And so he thought to himself, if I could somehow make that slime and you know breed those slimes to just have a bunch of them, could we make a diamond farm? And so he kind of made a, a, a huge effort there in uh, maybe early 2020 to see yeah. if he could figure that out and he it was a massive project and that's uh, sort of what he's best known for so he's kind of like the king of the slimes king of the slimes he is indeed and i'll actually see and if i can pull actually, up a picture here. actually uh his slime farming efforts uh as a result i actually made some changes to slime farming in the 1.5 update or it may have been a 1.5 point something but because of his efforts, it kind of made me realize that there were certain aspects of slime farming that were a little bit just too uh, harsh or mm. not very fun. So uh, it it resulted in some actual changes being made. Yeah, it was one of those changes, the uh, watering by hand and being able to use a sprinkler in there. That was one of the changes. The yeah. other change was um, the to get diamonds out of the slimes. I think it was like the... You had to have, like, uh, all the RGB values of the slime had to be, like, an even number right. or something. Mm -hmm. And I think I instead changed it so it, if it's, it doesn't have to be even numbers, but, you know, as long as they're all above a certain value, because basically you only get a diamond out of a slime if it's, like, a white slime. Right. Um, but it was, like, the even number requirement just made it extremely rare there would be any diamonds and it's like kind of you have to go through so much effort to have an appreciable number of white slimes and then you don't even get that good of a reward because you barely get any diamonds out of it 
So I, I effectively boosted the number of diamonds you're going to get out of doing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, it was a cool change. I ended up, you know, doing some research on that when 1.5 came out and uh, realized after, that's one of my favorite videos I've made was I realized that Slime Hutch, you know, actually is like for money making purposes because of that sprinkler. It's actually really good passive money. You know, you do get a pretty decent uh, chunk of change from those slime balls that you can make out of the slime that you get. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I, think, I think that was a, a cool, cool update. Yeah, I think people people tend to think of slime farming as completely pointless, but I actually, I don't know, I think it's a little bit underrated. I would agree. I think uh, I would agree. Let's see uh, who else we can hop in here with. Who have we not paid a visit to at this point? I think we, we've hit a lot of our competitors. I don't think... Hmm, did we get everyone? I'm not sure. I, I'm sure we're missing someone. Here, let's ask the chat. Who do you guys want to see us switch over to right now? Oh, and we're, we can actually see before we switch off, we can see uh, Brandigan and friends are currently putting... Uh, I think, is are they going with the sap? Oh gosh, what happened to Brandon? Oh, uh oh no. That was okay. Let's do a listen in because I got to see what he's saying right now. Oh no! <laughs> Chad, I literally almost threw that. Did you see how close the click was? Oh my goodness! They would have killed me. No, they they wouldn't have. Drink it faster. <sighs> I've never spent Funny thing so is, much is because we all don't put sap in, and he just says it's neutral, and he's not disgusted about it. Yeah. Yeah. We had an argument with Z about it because he kind of wanted the bad reaction. But mm -hmm. no one wanted to put in all the bad well, stuff and because we the lose points, points. The list did not say to have yeah, all it said four put, put it sap. in. It said so. put sap at the bottom left. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it did not say everyone has to. So we asked and they said we didn't have to. So. Yeah, that's one of the little things that we choose or choose the out for. <laughs> yep. You got the pancake recipe on the 14th tab? Yeah, I will. Okay. Actually, if you got the other one, you should get this one as well. Okay, I will. If you can actually cook complete breakfast then. Okay. Also, I have to give Shane a silver. Brand again, leave your house immediately on the 14th and actually tell me if the melons are done. I'm 90% sure they should be okay. done, but if they're not, we just want to instant sleep. Leaving house, leaving house. Melons are done. Yeah, that's, uh, there's no way that they weren't grown. Apparently. All right, so I thought that the, I thought that uh, Brandon ended up having a, a devastating. I thought he put the wrong thing in the luau pot, but I think he was just close to putting the wrong thing in the luau pot. So thankfully, wasn't quite that bad for him. But yeah, and you could hear them talking about how um, we ended up uh, having a little discussion about whether every person on their team needed to put sap in the luau pot or just one person. And we ended up settling on just one person needing to do that uh, because I didn't realize that makes a huge difference with friendship. Uh, and so a lot of their, you know, they're, they're going for certain spouses and they're trying to, you know, keep their friendship high with people. So it would have been a, a really big deal actually. So we had to talk about that just a couple days ago. Uh, but we're on now with Thurm, so uh, we, I apologize to Thurm. I did miss out on him the first time around. So uh, Thurm, now uh, this is a sleep simulator right now. <laughs> um, yeah, and I also, I, I said to Eric during the break, I was like, man, I would not have switched over to Sandy's Candy's listening if I knew they were just going to make fun of me for, uh, for not clarifying the sap and the luau pot thing. Uh, it's all good. <laughs> So yeah, here is a Therm right now, and it looks like they uh, doing a similar strategy to how people will wake up and they will process food in a preserves jar. It looks like they're actually refining their quartz, hopefully to get some more money out of that. Got a whole bunch of crops that they need to water here too. That's interesting. Do we listen in to see what Therm is saying? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Like people are asking for it. Yeah. All right. Let's let's hear it from Therm. Okay. Bad. 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 
<laughs> Everyone right. was pushing the look on the water and just getting one extra. Now we sleep until the seventh. <laughs> I, I was doing it on my way back to bed. Upon which we harvest peppers and then sleep more. Fun, 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 fun. Has anyone found any summer forage, like, at all? No. I couldn't see oh, any on God. the way down. Okay, to that's not going to be non- good for the 11th. We'll try, though. Okay, um, whatever. Hopefully you get all that the bus stop. Yeah, maybe yeah, I we'll should see. grab it all the way on the way to the CC. It's probably fine. I'll I'll go the backwards. Okay. Okay. And Sharpie, okay. instead of fishing on the farm south, can you check the forest for forage? Yeah. Actually, no. Sharky can fish. King can check the forest. Okay. The south forest. Yep. Yeah, obviously yeah. you can enter the town for the festival uh, party. Uh, yes. This is a lot. Oh, rain. What fun. Nice. Hey. Good rain day. Yum, 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 yum. How about early? Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Dude, we're okay. All right, so harvest. So go ahead and do some watering on the radishes. I really wish um, that this event could have happened before I went to college. So I could have put it on my application because this is hype. <laughs> this is good. All right, I gotta find some forage, I guess. I need where are the hot peppers, gold hot peppers. Me, no, I've got them. This, this is a short day. This is not a long day. Oh, I'm so dumb. I'm so dumb. I thought it was bed. the 11th. It's fine. It doesn't make much of a difference. Bed, bed, bed. I'm in bed. Mm-hmm. Dog, I've been in bed. Okay. I'll- wow, you can hear how fast the communication is with them, though, right? Like it's it's pretty impressive. They are uh, they are just rapid fire go 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 all the time. <laughs> let's uh, let's let's hop in with Lee Chat now from Pierre's Cherries. We haven't gotten to see them very much recently. Here we go. So it looks like Lee is the dedicated uh, fisher on this team. She's uh, she's going ham on the left side here. You can see that. Uh, Pierre's Cherries has also taken advantage of some of those spots that have the sprinklers. I mean, it is, you know, I'm sure for a, for a casual, nice, relaxing playthrough, you know, the beach farm, I could see it. You know, just stroll along, have some of that good old-fashioned watering. But these players aren't interested in that, Eric. These players are interested in maximum efficiency all the time, 24-7. They are uh, they're just trying to go, go, go. Uh, Absolutely. A little bit opposite of how Stardew Valley is typically played. True, and I think, you know, when uh, I announced the Stardew Valley Cup, a lot of people were kind of taken aback. They were like, you know, Stardew Valley is a relaxing, chill game. Why are you turning it into an eSport? But, uh, I mean, my perspective is that I find all the different ways people play Stardew Valley interesting, you know? It's not it's not like there's one way you have to play it, as, as long as people are having fun. And, you know, I find, it, I find the min-maxing and the speedrunning fascinating myself. Um, and I just thought this was a cool opportunity to showcase some of that. Yeah. And I, I don't think, I don't think, I think this doesn't necessarily mean Stardew Valley is now an eSport. I know that like <laughs> PC Gamer released a thing saying Stardew Valley is now officially an eSport. It's like, I never said that. If I didn't say it, it's not official. So I, I don't know about that. I mean, I just think I see this as a fun, uh, lighthearted competition. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think it's it's exactly right. Like, I think this is probably more of a competition than officially becoming an eSport by any means. I mean, people will, will play any game at a high level and they'll, you know, try to understand it and, you know, they'll try to speed run it. But I think there's a difference between that and, like, it actually being an official eSport. But, yeah, like you said, I think I think that's something that's, that's super cool about the way that you view your game, um, where it's really, you know, you sort of just let... Yeah, you, you give people all of the tools that they need to be able to enjoy this game in whatever way they want. And I think that's really cool. And I think that's a huge part of why people like this so much, you know? If you don't like playing this game at a high level, like, you'll never have to. And you can keep going and farming right. and having a great time and enjoying it. And you'll probably have better designs than, you know, other people. Like, that's that's the way that you play, so. So we got uh, teams in summer now. Oh, that's right, yeah. So... Uh, I know a couple of teams were planning on going for the greenhouse relatively early again for that that sprinkler advantage and also to be able to grow starfruit. So starfruit 
uh, at, especially at an earlier level, is the most profitable crop that you can create. And so I think you're going to see a lot of teams start mass producing some star fruit uh, a little bit later on in the greenhouse because it's just such a, such a powerful way to earn money. Yeah, I wonder if we will see any uh, ancient fruit in this competition. Yeah, I'm not sure. That's a that's a big, you know, it's a big commitment to get rolling. But once you do, you can really run with it. Let's. Uh, who do you want to hop back in with now? Let's see. Let's see. Does the chat have any uh, requests? I'm seeing a lot of Simsy. Maybe we should go listen in to Simsy, see you what she's to? saying. Yeah, let's do it. All right, absolutely. I'll pull that up in a jiffy. Oh, it looks like it's melon season out here for uh, Pierre's Cherries. <laughs> nice. All righty. Simsy, pull it up. Here we go. Here is Simsy's point of view, and let's uh, let's give her a little listen in. Ooh. I need the fish in here. Up is in the chest, by the way. Okay. I got one commune mushroom, so hopefully I'll find a second. Perfect. Just need hazel or not. Have any wood on you guys that I can just join? Nope. We are selling right at uh nine, right? Yep, I'm going now. Basically. Okay. I'll meet you there. Is the copper bonus in the chest? There's a hazelnut at the bus stop. Oh, yes, should I grab there's it? Only, there's only two. Yes, grab the hazelnut. Okay, cool. Actually, I'm gonna smelt more right now. We have the extra copper. It's gonna be in the main farmhouse. Okay, perfect. Yep, I'm heading there now. Should be done by the time that you get there. So, seven, I'm two over, so I got a minus 80. Uh, uh, there's two coffees on the beach. I'm just gonna, I don't have space, so I'll try and grab them. They shouldn't be spawned, but yeah. I also I'm got a hazelnut. Decorative trash can in one shot. Watch. <laughs> Watch. 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 Imagine. Imagine. You ah. have some time. I didn't get it. Okay. Uh, we're rich. Let's go. For now. For now. We're about to spend it all in it. That's okay. okay. All right, you could hear Brandigan in the background saying he's going for that decorative trash can, so that should be some more easy points for Sandy's candies. So I think what I, uh, I, I've just received some word that Krobus's crocuses just had a day reset. I'm not sure what that actually looks like for them here. Uh, maybe we should go take a, a listen in with them and see sort of what's happening. Uh, I've heard that they had a day reset. They're about to uh, complete the boiler room though and go to the luau. So let's see, uh, who do we want from Krobus's Crocuses? Let's go back to Blade. Blade is at the Luau right now with the rest of his team. And uh, here they are, yeah. So I think a lot of the strategy, uh, we talked about this a little bit ago when the other team was here, but I think one person's putting in Sap. And I think the way this Luau works is it's dependent on what everyone puts in. And so even though they're putting in a hated gift, it's the governor's not actually going to really hate them all that much for it. So how did they mess this up? 
Um, uh, this team right now or before? Uh, this well, is this the team that had to reset the day because of the they messed up the luau? Apparently, they messed this up. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how that happened. Maybe someone from the chat who's watching Crobus's crocuses might know. Uh, to reset the day, that's a great question. So, uh, resetting only happens at the end of the day, and so or sorry, saving only happens at the end of the day. And so, if at any point you exit to the title or you know whatever, just leave your farm then you'll start it back up again at the beginning of the day. So if something goes like catastrophically wrong, then you can just exit out to the menu and come back. Okay. So I think uh, it looks like Krobus's Crocus is meant to put some cauliflower in the luau pot, uh, but they did not. And then they also meant to talk to a couple of people to help out with their friendship, and they did not do that either, so... Uh, but it looks like they have fixed their mistake now, and they are back underway. Let's just do a quick score update. Sure. Um, people are asking. It looks like currently we have fourth place, Pieri's Cherries with 45 points. Uh, third place, Sandy's Candies with 70 points. Second place, Krobus's Crocuses with 85 points. And first place, Pam's Yams with 105 points. Yeah, Pam's Yams still, uh, still. I think they were in first last time we checked in with them, right? I think so too. They've they've been in first almost the entire competition. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what that means at this point. But <laughs> yeah, well, let's see. What have they completed since then? So they finished the boiler room. So that was a pretty big, uh, substantial chunk. So that's another reason why they wanted to go as low as they needed to in the mines. One of the hardest parts of the boiler room bundle is getting a fire quartz. And you can only get that past floor 80 naturally in the mines. So they had to go all the way down there and then look for it. So they managed to get that and complete the boiler room. They also danced with an NPC at the flower dance, which sounds pretty easy. Uh, but there's actually only a couple of NPCs that you even have the chance to dance with in that first year. Because you need to give them a birthday gift in order to have enough hearts with them. So yeah, that's again, pretty, that's a big one. Yeah, that is pretty big. It's impressive. I'm not sure all the teams will be able to do that. Uh, they have also returned Robin's axe to her, so that's a little bit of an easier one. Just ran out of the way to go grab that. Uh, they complete the Help Wanted quest. They talk to the old Mariner, uh, who is the one who sells you the marriage pendant. Uh, yeah, and I think that's all that they've updated since last time as well. Do you see any other tasks that have recently been completed? Uh, no. There was another boiler room from Krobus's Crocuses, of course. I think we uh, hopped on with them just after that. And Sandy's Candies also. So actually, every team except for Pieri's Cherries has at this point finished the boiler room. So interesting again to see those strategies sort of overlap. Someone asked, can we hear the four pet names? I think I have I have at least three of them. So let me check. Uh, I have at least three of the names. So Krobus's Crocuses has named their cat Sir, S-I-R, Sir Passable Z. Uh, Sandy's Candies has named their dog Habobo in honor of Habu's name being pronounced incorrectly. And then uh, Pieri's Cherries has named uh, their cat Concerned Z. <laughs> so a nice little combination there. And I'm not sure uh, about the last team. Does anyone know which, which animal we're missing here? I'll read the chat for a little bit. I'm trying to think what team that is actually. They're missing, so we have, I think we're missing Pam's Yams maybe? Everyone's just spamming Habobo. They love they love the name. <laughs> that was really funny. That, that comes from a speed run that we did a while ago. And uh, it was before I was friends with Habu in any capacity. And he was watching me do like my second speed run ever. And uh, the person we were doing it with was like, oh my gosh, we're in front of Habobo too. And it was just, uh, it, was, it, was, it was a pretty funny time. Uh, we're almost to the halfway point of the Ooh, competition. You're very so right. I think You'd have to reveal another uh, challenge, right? Thank you very secret much challenge. for reminding me. It is time for our third secret challenge to be announced. So let me go ahead and pull that up and notify our contestants. This is one of my favorite ones. This one was uh, courtesy of my girlfriend, M. She came up with this. And uh, M, I'm actually going to ask you, I know you're watching the chat right now. I'll ask you if they need some clarification on what this challenge is. Could you type that in for me? So the challenge... Uh, it is oh, not quite 2 o'clock yet. I'll, I'll wait a couple more seconds here. About 30 more seconds until we reveal. Let's also see... Uh, Pam's Yams named their cat something funny. Of course. We knew one of the teams had to do it. 
And they will get their points for that. <laughs> okay, let's uh, let's reveal this next challenge to them now, as it is just about two o'clock. The next challenge is going to be again for fifty points, and it is have someone on your team wear a full dinosaur outfit. And so that is made up of the shirt that you get from tailoring an emerald. So it's a green shirt. Dinosaur pants is its own unique thing that you get from uh, putting a dinosaur egg uh, and tailoring that. And then a dinosaur hat, which you can get from the hat mouse as well. So someone is going to be dripped out and we're going to see if anyone is actually able to pull that whole outfit together. But that's another 50 points. Uh, so thank you to, to M for that one. And again, if the competitors nice. don't understand exactly what that means, uh, please help me to explain it to them. Thank you. Cool. Speaking of uh, the Habu, why don't we uh, go listen in to him and see what he's up to? I would love that. Let's uh, let's pull his stream up real quick, and then we will get in there. Uh, what do you think about this dinosaur outfit one? This is one that uh, that like I said, my girlfriend came up with, and I think it's a. It's, it's kind of fun because it's just funny to see someone running around with a dinosaur outfit on the whole time. Uh, but it'll also be just interesting to see, like, you know, how they sort of bring some of this stuff together. Yeah, I like it. I think there's a lot of pieces involved that, uh, you know, it presents a, a significant challenge to pull that off. Yeah, I, I will be surprised if any team is able to pull that off in its entirety. But 50 points, I mean, that's a, that's a big deal. It might be worth yeah, going Yeah, that's for. a lot of points. A lot of teams will probably already have an emerald, and so we'll see if uh, if they go any further then. I don't quite remember how you get all the pieces. Like, how do you get the dinosaur pants? So that is dinosaur mayonnaise. You okay. have the tailor. And then the dinosaur uh, hat, I actually don't remember myself, but it's one mm. of the achievements that you get from the hat mouse. I think people might pull it off, you know, because you can encounter a, a dinosaur level in the skull cavern, and I think you can get eggs pretty easily from that. Dinosaur eggs. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be, that's going to be the crucial piece is uh, being able to get that getting, dinosaur. Getting one egg. of those dino levels. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Alright, hey, let's, uh, let's listen in with Habu and friends. Funny enough, that is actually workable if we get two dino eggs from Skull Caverns. Yeah. Oops. Unironically. Let's just keep note of that and see. Yeah, I'll make sure I kill everything. And we're already getting the sewing machine for something else, so it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Which is why it works. I just have to get a lot of extra cloth then. I need four. Okay, guys, act like we're having a party. I need, th I need three. Yay. Yay. Party. Oh, party. This is so much fun, everybody. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> sorry, my train's coming. Sorry. Wait, did a train come? <laughs> Wait, really? No, I, I wasn't listening. Bob, Bob. No, I don't. No, okay. Yeah, makes sense. Because train is free points if it happens. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, okay, I do I'm now. going I doing? straight to JoJo, please. All right, guys, this is an exciting time. It's time for me to get the legendary oh, yeah. fish. Good luck. Best spot party. Z, I got this. Z shouldn't have expected anything less from us there. Yeah. We told him that we were, what we were doing. Yeah, he knew. <laughs> okay. So the cake in Amaranth is uh, the the house below? Yeah, it's in it's in the keg chest or the farm chest to the left of the gotcha. house. And then uh, read your mail before you go, remember? So you can get the... Amaranth gift. And do pink cake first. I got extra coffee. Yeah, we better be with that spa party. It lasted three seconds. <laughs> Honestly, they should be on Fuzz's stream just to see the chair exploit right now that we're abusing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Brand again, who's catching the legendary fish instead of just watching me animation cancel trees. One sec, gotta read the mail. Oh, for on he hasn't shown up yet. That one's... So, Habu made a reference. He said Z should have expected nothing less. He was talking about how uh, that challenge is everyone getting the spa at the same time. And he was like, you know. We're not going to actually have a spa party, right? Like, we're going to hop in and get out right away. And I was like, I know, 
but I want to believe that you guys will have a fun little time there and just like actually mess around. But no, they were laser focused. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of fruit. That is a lot of fruit. <laughs> hey, let's uh, let's hop over with uh, with Pam's yams again now. Let's go back to Matt McCleskey and see how things are going for him over there. Let's see. I'll pull this up and then Matt. There we go. Pam's yams looks like they're still in the lead. Yeah, they've they've been chipping away at those challenges. I think they've put in more hours than any other team as far as practicing time together goes. And so, yeah, I, I think that at least out of all the teams, I would expect them to execute best on their strategy. But also, I know they changed stuff up a lot uh, towards the end. So maybe they honed in on what actually, you know, realistically might have been the best strat. Can we listen in? Yeah, let's uh, let's listen in with them and see how uh, how they're doing. I can get hella far. Maybe we'll just actually win. I don't know. Can you get really far? Oh yeah, I, I'm good. I thought you said I'm you weren't good. good at it. Oh my bad. No, no, I'm, okay. I'm very yeah. very good at. We should. I wasn't doing good active listening. I have I have beaten it. You have to say your mm-hmm and okay's. Be active, please. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, have I think any we have to. I should have bought more bait. Oh, that's okay. Fine. Did you get enough stuff from this? Pets? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure I get like everything from ocean and regular, like river. I would oh, literally do we'll anything for a rain day. Yes. We got so many rain days that did not stink and matter. So on TikTok, you dropped the harpy bit, and now you're uh, TikTok Pam. You do anything? I'm just gonna let that one sit for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and let that one sit, dude. So day eleven, we can we can go to the mines. I can uh, yeah uh, get copper. We, we desperately need five copper. Yeah. We can buy copper. We can. Yeah, but it's money's only so seventy five a piece. Yeah. I guess. I mean, we already have like the the melons down, so it doesn't really matter what we spend here. And having four thousand this or five thousand that's not getting spent is pretty bad. Sure thing. We just need so stone for the preserves. Oh, oh, oh. Is Robin open on the luau? No. <clears throat> Lazy. This feels oh, a lot geez. better. Yeah, oh, we're yeah, doing we're I know doing we're stressed, yeah. but we're still doing it yeah. really well. We're yeah. pulling, we're really executing fast. really well. We'll need to get. Uh, don't forget the friendship. And we have to go to Lou out tomorrow. Vincent, if we can, grapes. Uh, we should check for forage on Saturday or tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, Do we um, have grapes in the green chest or no? I got all the crab pot from. Ocean? That's actually really good. We have sweet peas. I didn't find grapes. I think that was the only one we forged. So fine. You can you also grow that. them in fall. Here's your hot pepper for your hot pepper. That, uh, <laughs> yeah, I have it. I'll give it to you tomorrow. <laughs> He's not my hot pepper. He's Sean's hot pepper. <laughs> Sean is getting the farming XP. Um, oh, 11th, you said we're going mine, or to the mine today? Yeah, this is Luato. Okay. Oh, water. Everybody else go do other Someone, things. Someone, uh, Liger, make sure you have a sap on you, please. Yes, I will uh, grab it. I'm gonna go I, found, I found a grape. If somebody could nice. find me some grapes, Wait. I would literally give you a big old smooch. Wait, I have yeah. one. Oh, there's okay, a slingshot okay. with the rock. Okay. Berries. We still need to shoot yeah, one. I put, I put the slingshot in the social chest. Okay. With one rock. I'm coming uh, back real quick with the forage I'm, for... I'm just gonna bring a couple rocks just to be safe. If I miss, right. that would be embarrassing. I have my that would be a little embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. Oh, dude, Pam's YM sounds like they're just having a good old time, honestly. <laughs> uh, in the words of Shawnee Do, if you actually managed to do that, I'd give you a big old smooch. I'm not. I've missed what he was talking about, unfortunately, in that exact moment. But I mean, he is. Uh, he's having a great time. It sounds like. <laughs> yeah, Pam's YMs are having fun and they're winning. That's right. But. Again, like we said, this is, you know, anyone's game at this point. I think it'll really come down to the wire. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, let's check out right here. Let's check out uh, old Sharky Games, because I think uh, it's been a little bit since we checked in with him. And uh, why don't we just hop right back in to another listening and see uh, what their team is talking about. Sounds good. Oh, hey, should I, I be... Uh, do we have a rainbow shell? Yes, we do. 
already? It's in the yeah, I found one. It's in the chest. In the red CC chest. Okay. Nice. Hey, just oh, just double check it's there. Yep. Hopefully no one's got rid of it. But we got that so early on. Yep, rainbow shells there. Oh, actually. Nice. Yeah. I'll harvest that after. Uh, okay. By the way, I've got a couple, uh... So, foraging on the beach. Have people been getting all the crates? Because there's nothing. I've had a few crates. Yeah, I, I took one. Oh, you gave me the weight. I don't see none. Yes. Oh my god. Let's try and maybe get this again. 15. Alright, I got the lightning rod. I'm coming back. Thank you. Alright, so I'm, I'm still trying to think about the legend. So there is, uh, is Sharky and friends over there on Crobus's Crocuses, obviously doing a great job as always. So, uh, hey, something that you had said to me during the break, you wanted to take a bit of a deeper dive into some of these factoids that our competitors have given us. Let's take some time uh, and read through some of our favorites. Why don't you start us off? Well, one that I thought was interesting that I didn't know, probably a lot of the viewers who are fans of Lil Simsy knew that her last name is Sims. So that's where the her name comes from. I thought it was just because she played the Sims a bunch. I had no idea. But she's also saying that she uh, played, when she played in the Stardew Valley Twitch Rivals tournament, um, her internet kept cutting out every five minutes, and it was a total disaster. I did get to watch some of that back, and it was it it was pretty rough. I won't lie. <laughs> yeah, she was uh, connecting, disconnecting all over the place, over and over again. It was uh, it was kind of rough for her, but she did eventually sort of settle on uh, uh, sort of she she like actually sort of worked it into her strategy a little bit. Like, they started giving her the farm-based tasks because when she reconnected, she was on the farm every time. And so rather than have her work away, so they, they worked around it. But I don't think she's been having any issues this time, which is very good for her. We get to see her at her full potential. It's kind of a miracle we haven't had any uh, problems in this tournament so far. Yeah. Knock on wood. No, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, so I'll uh, I'll read uh, um, one of my favorite facts from Therm, and honestly, they're all kind of fire. But uh, he said, uh, when I was nine, I bit my DS out of sheer rage when I lost a race in Mario Kart. That's he that's bit, a fun. He bit his DS. Apparently, he bit his <laughs> DS when he was nine. He, he's such a fun guy. Like he's so interesting. Like, hey, share a fun fact about yourself. Like, what would you say, Eric, if someone's like, hey, tell me about yourself, right? It's like, what are your interests, right? Like, you know, what, what do know. you do with your time? He's like, you know, this one time when I was nine and really angry. It just, yeah, it really interesting when he went that way with it. Uh, let's just go down the list. Let's just read one from every player. So why don't you pick your favorite out of Blades 3 right there? Um, He says that when he plays Stardew Valley with his son, his son goes and pickaxes all of the parsnips, destroying everything. Oh my god. <laughs> Both a blessing and a curse. Like, a blessing to be able to play with your son and enjoy that time with him. But it's like, son, just don't... Just not the parsnips. Come on, there's rocks everywhere. <laughs> and he is, he is a father of two. Yeah, so. very nice. It's very nice. Uh, Sharky uh, has a couple of cool fun facts. So he said that he... <laughs> One of his facts, uh, which we already have talked about, but he said, I've never attempted to speed run in a game, regretting that right now. But I think he's doing all right. And he also said that he loves gardening and he actually attempted to grow a giant crop in real life one time, but no success. Uh, King Nublet says he's the world record holder and no major glitches pants percent. Do you know what that means? I know what pants percent is. Can you, can you figure it out? Uh, is it... How quickly you can give Mayor Lewis his shorts back? It's or? it's just how quick you can pick them up. Yeah, that's okay. exactly what it is. So it's it's a bit of a meme category, um, and yeah. So there's <laughs> he actually did like this whole breakdown video on that where he talked about all the different ways that you can approach that challenge and like all the different you know methods. It's a, it's amazing how quickly you can optimize something as arbitrary as getting Mayor Lewis shorts out of Marnie's house. But yeah, so uh, yeah, he's the world record holder in the no major glitches pants percent. That's Took it fine. right out from under me. Uh, Albino Liger 
Uh, we already talked about how he was on the winning team for both of the Stardew Valley Twitch Rivals tournaments. Um, but he said also that the first and only tattoo that he's uh, ever had was a full back piece of the great Deku tree from Zelda with the animals hidden in the branches. So that's really cool. I'd like to see that. Um, did you ever play Legend of Zelda at any point? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've played uh, many of the Zelda games. Yeah. So a full Deku tree. Really cool. Uh, on that note, uh, Matthew McCleskey says that he's beaten every Zelda game. If you think about it, that's quite a feat because there are a lot of them. That's really point. impressive, yeah. <laughs> yeah, really cool. Uh, this that means he even played, he even beat uh, Zelda 2, the side scrolling. Uh, oh, wow, one, you know? yeah. Yeah, I've yeah. never played those, but geez, that's, <laughs> that's real old school. So, this is maybe my favorite of the fun facts that everyone listed. Shawnee Dew said one time, former tight receiver, or sorry, former tight end of the New England Patriots, Rob Gronkowski, colloquially, colloquially, you know what I mean, colloquially known as Gronk, retweeted him because apparently he took Gronk's energy drink, which was also referred to as Gronk, and he froze it into ice cubes. And apparently Gronk really liked that and retweeted him. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's funny. Um. Piano Addict says that he is the seventh of ten kids. That's amazing. That must be interesting to be to have uh, nine siblings. Yeah, geez, that is. <laughs> I couldn't imagine. I have one sister, and to yeah, geez, wild. Uh, Walgug says that he has put roughly 500 hours into Stardew Valley in the past six months, which averages out to two and a half every single day which I'm sure is actually typical of a lot of people in this competition. I, I just talked recently about Habu. Why don't you take a guess at how many hours Habu has in this game, Eric? Uh, 1,000? More. <laughs> 1,500? 4,300. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I think 4, he's... 4,300? Yeah. yeah I, I think he's streamed all but 300 of those hours, too. So that's yeah. 179 full days. <laughs> oh my God. See, that's, that's insane. That, that is a lot of Stardew Valley. And that's, uh, or like that's why he's if so you good. played eight hours a day, that's like over a year. It's like a year and a half, eight hours, eight hours a day. day. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Super impressive from him. Uh, you want to take it away with Penguin Panda well, here? That, that's part of like, just a little side note but that's like part of why i wanted to do this competition uh it's just to you know give back to some of these people like habu who have dedicated thousands of hours to perfecting you know his method and streaming and all of that and it's just so cool that people are so dedicated to this game yeah it, it really is and, and i obviously speak for everyone that's in this competition like thank you for always investing in the community and always, you know, wanting to give back because I think that's something that a lot of people recognize about you is how, you know, ingrained you are into the community and how willing you are to listen to the people and uh, and, and thank them when you have the chance to. So yeah, everyone everyone who's in this is, is super Absolutely. grateful. I see someone in chat says they have 5,300 hours, oh Jandara. So. <laughs> yeah, jeez, that is uh... <laughs> I wonder what, I wonder who the most hours in the entire world is. i don't know i wonder if uh i wonder if there's a way to see that on steam or something hmm. yeah i don't know um okay next up mr penguin panda i'm actually gonna say two of the facts because sure. I, think, I think they're interesting well the first one is i have over 30 plushies including a penguin and a panda maybe uh i might have to send mr penguin panda <laughs> like a, a crobus plush oh yeah <laughs> that'd be awesome um, and then number two he says he only has one ear his left true? ear, he was born with, uh, his left ear was malformed. I never knew that. I've never seen him without a headset on. Wow. That is crazy, huh? I, I did not know that. That's a very fun fact. <laughs> yeah, that's um, interesting. Yeah, cool. Uh, Cordite, as one of his fun facts, says that most people can roll their tongue into a tube, you know, like up on the sides. And he says he cannot, no matter how hard he tries. Which, I, I don't know how much that's really set him back in life, but... It's, it's just a weird thing uh, about Cordite. And he also says that he finds pickles so disgusting that he can't even handle the smell of them. Don't tell Harvey. Uh, uh, Lee Chaton says, 
I was so nervous on my first Stardew stream that I blew up eight statues of Endless Fortune and the Iridium Cat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, and who else is next? We have uh, Fuzzerino. Uh, Fuzzerino says that uh, gaming has been her escape from the real world. It was something I uh, was told I was never meant to do as a woman. But look at me now, fighting against all odds. And she is killing it right now in this competition. So, yeah. And uh, she also just says that she's a bubbly and friendly person who would love to lick each and everyone's face. I didn't read that fun fact before I started to read it out loud. Uh, so that's that caught everyone by surprise, including me. Uh, the the Habu, um, his controversial opinion is that cereal is a soup. All right, we're moving on. We're I'm I'm not giving that any more time of day. He's he's literally just trying to rile people up. Oh man. Uh, and Simsy said that I am embarrassingly incapable of Journey of the Prairie King, and those are the only Steam achievements that she's missing. Oh man, wouldn't it be a shame if there was a Journey of the Prairie King secret challenge? <laughs> Effector's <laughs> challenge, perhaps. Yeah, just real quick. Yeah. Um, Brandigan says he's never gone the Joja route. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, I feel like everyone's at least started to go the Jojo route, even if they didn't finish it. Yeah. All right, cool. Hey, let's uh, let's hop on over to Shawnee Do again. It's been a little bit since we've uh, hopped in with him, and let's uh, let's give him a little listening as well. How about it? Okay, sounds good. Fine, it, it's fine, it's fine. We'll do it another day. We'll do another day. It's not that's the least of my worries. Yeah, start. We'll be back. The, the pick and copper are there in, in Clint's to do it, so all we have to do is go and drop yeah, it. Yeah, that's actually great. Um, planting the star fruit right mm -hmm. by the scarecrow. Oh, wait, just plant them all. I only have one. Oh, I forgot. I thought I'd give 15 for some reason. I am big okay. silly mode. <laughs> That'd be insane. Oh, there's Eco Hill. Nice. Sweet. Yeah, Eco Hill. Yeah. It will harvest the star, star fruit at the end. Can you? Did you put that in for us, Nate? Sorry, I didn't, shouldn't have shifted. Sorry, what'd you say? Just uh, we remember. got Night on Eco Hill from the museum. Okay. We should get Singing Stone soon. We should. Yeah, we should. Yeah. But, um, All we right, it's just, get it it's from, just water uh, days. I'm going to collect some of the gems so that, that we don't have. Are you going today to do this? No, we're just water and sleeping today. Okay. Oh, crab pots. Got a rusty got spur. All of the on the left of the farm. Yeah, uh, we'll Liger got those yesterday. I thought. What? I'm just asking. No, no, no. no I'm sorry. I'm, I was just trying to fill us all in. Uh -huh. Sorry yeah, if that no, sounded rude. I didn't intend it to come off that way. <laughs> Where's the iron at? Um, I'm going to I don't have it. It's okay. Why are we, was our default to jump to the Cordite's team? Don't know. <laughs> don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's been a lot of cherry talk for sure. I want to be on Brandigan's team. He so does have good dad energy. Sprinkler plot, right? Oh, we did that. Right. Oh. Baby, 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 hey, yeah. The rain yeah. on this run has been absolutely poggers. It's actually been <laughs> absolutely <super> poggers. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go straight to the, the bottom here. Oop! I picked up my chair. I would be so sad if we get like a lightning storm and it hits starfruit. Oh, oh my god! I just thought about that. Sorry. Not to someone can go don't go. say that someone kind of stuff. Another one. Sorry. My brain went to a bad place. We can go get another one. Uh, if, if someone, it's the last day we can plant it. If someone goes to the museum today, we can collect the rest of them. Okay. Uh, there's three more that we can plant. Okay, we're gonna oh, do that. It. Yeah, we got mine cards as well. Okay. I know. But the museum doesn't open until eight, right? Eight. Yeah, eight. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. I'm it's okay. Then, I, then, then I'm gonna. I'm to, to go get Caroline. Yeah, I'm gonna okay. go give Vincent a grape if we have one. Yeah, we should. Um, there's only one in the community center eight. chest. Come to bus stop. I have a grape. Okay, no, 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 I'm just, you put yours in the community center chest, I'm going to take mine out. Okay, I'll, I'll keep mine then. Shoot, we need oh, a keg! I can't, I can't get in. So, it looks like it's a big day here for uh, for Shawnee doing friends. It looks like they are uh, going all over the place, uh, looking like to go to the museum as well as some other places around town here now. What do you think about uh? What do you think about their strategy so far? Are they still in first place for as uh, as far as points are concerned? Let's check know? it out. Let's yeah. check it out. Um. Oh, nice. Yeah, it looks like uh, Pam's Yams is in first with 185 points. 
Uh, Sandy's Candy is in second with 155. So they got a 30 point lead at the moment. Very cool. Nice. Yeah, they're doing a great job. You can see now Piano rolling in with a bunch of uh, donations to the museum right now. So I think one of the things that they were going for with that museum was the challenge was get a night on Echo Hill, which is one of the paintings. And I think you get that from donating maybe 12, 20 artifacts to the museum. So uh, it was a pretty substantial chunk to, you know, wrap up. But, you know, going through the mines a little bit, digging up some of those wiggly worms... Uh, that can get you there. So I think they said yeah. that they were closing in on the number that they needed for that. Cool. Pierre's like Cherries uh, in fourth place with 65 points. Quite a ways behind. Uh, they need to really uh, step up their game if they're going to have a shot at winning this competition. That's right. Why don't we, uh, why don't we hop in with Pierre's Cherries and see how they are stepping up their game. Let's see, let's go back to, uh, let's go to Mr. Penguin Panda. Okay, sounds good. We'll go in with him and see what's up with them. Yeah, it is, I did. Yeah, I already got, got it. Yeah. Oh, you gifted her? Yeah. Oh, okay, you have to tell me that, because I was like, I, I... Uh, Z, someone's asking uh, how, um, who updates the team progress, the points? Uh. Yeah, that is a, a great question. I have a couple of people who are doing a fantastic job helping me out behind the scenes. A couple of my mods are doing that. The main point person is Azira as well, that she is overseeing all of them doing that. But we're going to do a final check at the end to make sure that all of the team's scores are correct before we actually, you know, close it up. So switch this back here to Chrome. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's take a look here now at Penguin Panda. There he is. Oh, his camera is still frozen, unfortunately. I don't think he knows that. I'm gonna type in his chat. Camera frozen. I didn't realize. Unfortunately, I wanna make sure he knows because he could probably just unplug it and plug it back in, but we can still enjoy in, his game. Someone play. in chat uh, joked that his camera's not frozen, that's just his gamer focus. Oh, of course, yeah, he's just a <laughs> statue, just absolutely going as, uh, as he's locked in right now. I kind of like that theory. Uh, yeah, mods as in moderators as well, so yeah, again, thank you guys uh, for all of your hard work. I will uh, give them a little shout out at the end. Okay, let's see. Uh, I think I might try to pull up Wallagug's POV. That way we can stick on with this team uh, as well, and then we can do a listen in. Didn't Wallagug make the uh, Stardew Valley Iceberg video? He did, yeah. That's a. Uh, yeah, that was one that I actually. All the, yeah, all the creepy pastas and <laughs> memes and different things like that. Yeah, what do you think about all that as as the person who created it? Uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed uh, the the Stardew Valley iceberg when it came out. Yeah. Did he come? Did he invent the iceberg, or did he just make a video explaining it? I think he. I don't know if he made the iceberg or not, but he at least pulled from other people's, you know, theories. And everything so i think he might have yeah. pulled it together um and then went through the explanation i believe that's how it worked some of them were really funny i, I liked i liked some of them a lot some yeah. of the theories that are on there um well there, some of the theories i didn't like but some i like <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right let's uh let's give a little listen in now to team pieri's cherries from Wallagog's point of view as it looks like it might be time for a spa party thought of DCing during festivals. We don't all need to be there. Let us all go through the women's washroom here. <laughs> no. I don't get why you have, you have like no bathing suits on for me. <laughs> oh, because... now I have. Oh yeah, you were, you were topless. Yeah. There's lots going Get on there. All right, where's our other two people? We're in, come on guys. Did, uh, did you gift Evelyn yep, yesterday? I did. Hey, oh my god, hey, that look how handsome party. you are. Head back. <laughs> so back, go to festival. 
Look at your oh, bald it's... head in your bikini. <laughs> I tap that. Sorry, this family friendly. My bad. Okay. <laughs> Wait. I never thought about it. If we did see now, we would also be. Oh no, no, Wallaga wouldn't be, so <laughs> never mind. Yeah, no, no, no. Wally, Wally's gotta walk. Okay, so oh, we what did this missing? party. I'm gonna disconnect now, then, right? Yeah. Oh, can I? I mean, I don't know. yeah, I guess Should so. we just, like, mm, no, wait, oh, I don't know, like, can stay around in the fishing, maybe? Maybe that's better? I have well, no clue we... about the rules regarding that. I just need to pee. <laughs> Let's oh, just trigger yes, the cutscene and then just be back in, like, two minutes. Yeah. It just yeah, says to yeah. win the ice fishing contest. Okay. It doesn't specify that all no, players No, I'm saying need because of there. the, yeah, that we're not playing today. It's kind of weird, I guess. But then again, we did it often enough. There's... Yeah, I'm pretty sure other teams yeah, are doing We have the same. three minutes to fish, so I don't know. Yeah, that, that's fine. I'll just go down and trigger it with you all. I also need to go to the washroom at some point, just for the record. <laughs> I'm just gonna hold it, because we're winning this okay. money, guys. I'm going to pee. <laughs> Let me save. All right, and we are back as we get to spectate the ice fishing contest with Pieri's Cherries. The uh, next secret challenge did come out. Number four of five, it's crazy. This is our second to last one. We're really starting to get closer to the end of this competition now. And that secret challenge is, for 50 points, to craft a mini jukebox. And so I'm not going to explain exactly at this very moment how you do that, because I want people to sort of figure it out for themselves and route it on the fly. Um, but that is the the task right now is to unlock the recipe for and to craft a mini jukebox That's a tough one it is it, it really is but I I believe I think that the if they if they put some effort towards it I think they'd be able to do it yeah I think those 50 pointers are gonna be crucial mm hmm that's the kind of thing that you know someone might pull ahead at the last moment with one of those you never know yeah. I mean, it's like, you gotta decide, you know, it's gonna take someone way far out of their way if they wanna go do. But I mean, that's worth two, three other challenges. So it's like, as long as you can do that in the time it would take you to earn another, you know, complete another three challenges, could be worth it for sure. Yeah. I'll be really interested to watch this back afterwards. I'm gonna end up going back and watching everyone's point of view. And I forgot to mention also in the beginning of the stream, if you guys have missed the beginning part or you wanna watch it back live, uh, all of this is going to be available on YouTube, both on my VODs channel, which has a link down below uh, of just our entire stream, uh, as well as I'm going to find a way to have everyone else's perspectives readily available. So you guys can uh, just keep checking back in like the about section of my Twitch over the next couple of days, and I'll give you guys some links right there at the top so you can find it in case you missed some in the beginning or you have to step out a little early. Or at less than one hour left in the competition. Yeah, that's right. One hour now uh, until we are all wrapped up. And I think it's going to start getting to crunch time right now. Like, I, I really think you're going to start seeing some teams step up. I mean, you can see Ice Fishing Contest is, is it one that they're all going towards now that they're into winter. Uh, we'll see. There's also give a, uh, give a loved gift at the Feast of the Winter Star. That's another one that they'll have to do. And so we'll see if anyone is able to work on that. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting because you don't know who your person is until seven days before the Feast of the Winter Star. And so you'll have to either get that item that they love or find a universally loved item. Yeah, there'll be a lot of, uh, I guess, luck of the draw there. You know, yeah, it could be. pulling a someone that they might happen to have the gift on hand or whatever. Mm -hmm. So what, what kind of uh, challenges do you think everyone's going for at this point? Yeah, so I think... A lot of the teams are going to end up doing some splitting up. And you know what? I'll actually read through uh, the, the challenge list right now. And we will uh, we'll just see through some of those. So there's a bunch of community center based things. Uh, some of the teams decided to uh, go rather than complete the community center bundle and get the points for it. They actually decided to just sell out to Joja Mart and take the loss on the points, but make it easier for them to unlock stuff. Uh, so there's a bunch of those challenges, but I think some of these that we're going to see at the end, uh, you may see some teams run around and, you know, gather uh, like a lot of the secret items. Uh, you'll probably see a lot of um, maybe some more Skull Cavern attempts here at the end when teams are trying to rush after they've worked up all this money to uh, get enough money to buy stone, or they might use that money to buy barns and coops for animals. Uh, I'm sure you'll see some Junimo Kart attempts as well, because I I'm not sure who is in first place for the Junimo Kart challenge right now. I'm not sure if anyone has actually even attempted it 
at this point. So there's yeah, still if, some potential. If someone makes there. an attempt, we should definitely switch over and watch that for a little bit. That'd be fun. Absolutely. And so I'll uh, ask. Uh, I'll it ask looks like remind me then. Looks like happens. oh yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. It looks like Pierre's cherries just uh, restarted the day. It's not looking good for them. Oh, did they actually? Oh no, I didn't even notice that. Oh man, so they're they're entirely resetting this day right now. Um, <clears throat> did they not win the ice fishing contest, or what happened? Oh, it sounds like someone said their game crashed. <laughs> oh, I Yikes. see. Okay, so apparently, I guess not a reset, but just lost someone there at the end. I wonder how that happened. Yeah, I'm not sure. Hey, let's hop in. Uh, let's hop in with Lil Simsy. Let's see how she's doing right now. Uh, over with Sandy's Candies. And this is actually going to get to showcase one of the things that we were talking about a little bit earlier in the competition with needing to... Um, oh, actually, just as I say that, she ended up losing connection there, but uh, the, the curse of Lil Simsy returns. One of the things that we were talking about happening was players getting to uh, have a bunch of crops and then use the preserves jars to fill in... Um, uh, so make all those crops worth more money. So uh, we'll see as soon as she loads back in here um, what her what her house is looking like. So you can see a lot of days she'll come out and the first thing that she'll do or the last thing she'll do before bed is run around and put all of the crops that they've grown up until this point into preserves jars to make them worth a lot more money. So I'm sure that's a, a common thing that we'll see. Yeah, I don't know if the game crashed, just to clarify. I don't think the game crashed. Uh, I think maybe just the host lost right. internet connection which would boot everyone uh yeah unfortunate but that is uh likely the case yeah, hopefully little simsy isn't the host for their <laughs> team <laughs> and she is uh gathering up some wood right now looks like she has not decided to learn how to animation cancel as uh or at least she's opted to not go for it this time around but it's better to do it slow and steady and to uh to do it accurately i think Uh, I just uh, got word also, I'll, I'll answer a question from Azira. Uh, so Azira said they had enough points to win when they crashed. Do they get points? I, I'm not sure what team you're talking about or anything, but yeah. I think uh, whether that was Junimo Kart or the ice fishing contest or whatever, I think if they had enough points and they like actually the host lost connection, uh, then we'll say that's okay. Great question though, thank you. I've heard some people uh, are requesting Fuzzerino. Oh, that's maybe right. Maybe we should, yeah, we should sure. switch over to her, maybe uh, listen in a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. So that's uh, the same team we're listening to here, but we will uh, get Fuzz's point of view up in a jiffy, and we'll uh, see how she's doing. It's been a little bit since we've hopped in with her. Yeah, see if she's hanging in there with the uh, that Australian time zone. That's right, yeah. Yeah, she... Uh, <laughs> both her, and we actually didn't mention, but Blade is also playing out of New Zealand, so he is also... I think he went to bed last night at 6 p.m.? Or something like that to wake up on time so his sleep schedule is thoroughly destroyed for this contest but here is a uh, fuzzerino's view right now and why don't we uh, switch on over and give a little listen in to this team not the entire thing just where's the gold bar by the way is it not in the it might be in my chest i can't see it i heart i think it's down here you gave him the gold quality one, right? Yeah. Oh, six hearts. Okay, good. One up three. Uh, we need, we need. Is anybody near the strange capsule now? Yes. Okay, I'll just put it anywhere. Well, that was the delay. <laughs> but no, guys, I'm having, I'm having so much fun. It's intense, so obviously, like but I'm having so much fun. So much. Uh, I'm not, on the mainstream. Hi, like mainstream. Basically the first, like, two or three sprinklers. Getting intense. Oh, okay. That's fine. I gotta upgrade my axe. Oh my god. All you got the gold bars, right? Yes, I'm gonna go upgrade them right now. If I didn't go to the wrong place. <laughs> Stop it. I don't think I have enough time Robin. to get down to the lucky bow. Oh uh, yeah, come up. You All can right. do it on a different day, it's fine. Yep. All yep. right, upgrading gold axe. This is good so far. Although I need an axe, which is gonna be a bit of a poop. So there's that. Good so far, we're doing good. Let me know we're doing really ready. good. I might just pick these up in case. Uh, not much, you're good. We don't need it except for like food. Cause we got, we have everything that we need really. That's all I really need. So we're good. <laughs> I need to pick up an ax though. Cause uh, we need wood for the, the upgrades and the, um, 
Okay. In the coop. So the 24th. Yep. Once everybody gets back. Yes. All right, take that. Level 10 scale. Yeah, we're already level 10 in farming. Nice. Oh, yeah. We get points for getting uh, 10 levels in something. And Hubu is level 10. Because we've been he's been planting and making everything pickled so then we can make money. Which is really good. Really happy to hear that. Thank you, Fandy. I appreciate that. I want to make sure we get the um, complete breakfast recipe tomorrow as well. Hmm. Mm-hmm. There we go. I just gotta go. I'm in bed. Everybody should be in bed right now. Like, we're running. Everybody should be running right now. Oh, I'm in the big room. Oops. Can't move your bed, sorry. Oh, sorry. what's the date tomorrow? The 21st. Yet. Maybe I can take my hat off and put on, on the signature. chain. Uh, flower dance, okay. Are we going flower dance? Flower dance. We're, we're going flower dance. dance, so we can Flower dance, dance big day, and then chain. we just have clean up. We got yep. this. So Is there a tracker? Thank you, Skeleton. Appreciate that. So by thank the time you, that we're you. doing clean up, we, we should have about... So very nice. It looks like uh, they are well under their way. Fuzzerino upgrading a tool or two and uh, getting some points for that uh, as well. But we're going to hop on over with Pam's yams now. And uh, Eric, why don't, you, why don't you talk about how they've been performing? Yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed with Pam's yams performance. Uh, they're currently in the lead with 200 points. Uh, Sandy's Candies in second place with 185. But, you know, going into this competition, I was kind of expecting uh, Habu's team to do the best. You know, Habu is known as being possibly the strongest Stardew Valley player on planet Earth. So, uh, oh, it looks like Sandy's Candies actually just got 10 points. So they're at 190, only 10 points behind Pam's EM. So it's really neck and neck. Wow. Um, yeah, things are down to the wire. It's pretty <laughs> exciting, guys. Yeah, you're going to see. I mean, we got... But, yeah, I've been very impressed now. with Pam's Yam's performance. Yeah, they, uh, they've they been doing great. I think the one thing that really helped them out, like we've said, is just the sheer amount of time that they spent practicing. I mean, it's one thing to come up with an idea and to think it through, but then you do it, and it's like you learn so much or there's so much that you didn't think of, and then you have to reroute things. And so even with Pam's Yam's changing their strategy up, even until last night, I think that was just them zeroing in on what is the best strategy for them. You know, if, do, do these teams know that what standing they're at right now? And do you think they're checking the spreadsheet? I'm not sure. There might be people from their chat who are telling them and they might know through that. But I was also kind of going back and forth on this originally with, well, should I let them read their chat during this competition, right? Like I don't want them to read the chat and get an unfair advantage because they know what other teams are doing. And all the competitive players are pretty much like, dude, trust me, like we have our route and it doesn't matter what other teams are doing. Like, we're not going to change what we practiced. And uh, with the exception of, like, the 50-point challenges, it was really just like, they're like, hey, we're, we're just executing on our thing. And by that time, by the time we'd find out what another team's doing, it's too late. So, yeah, I think uh, it's it's really cool to see Pam's Yam's strategy coming to life here. Can we listen in with uh, Albino Liger and see how the... Oh, it looks like Sandy's Candy's actually just tied it. Ooh. They're tied at 200. Oh wow, 200, 200. Let's uh, let's listen in with Albino Liger and his team right now to see, see how they're feeling. Uh, yeah, see how they're feeling, what they're going for. Yeah, preserve sleep. Spring. Islands are done. Islands are done. Oh. Leave them. We, 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 we can get a big one. Yeah, we can get a big one. We get a big one. I'm just smelting the last two bars for the copper act. Mm -hmm. Fine. We'll yeah, do that's, that's tomorrow. That's perfectly fine. All right, mega crap. Let's go. You need a Break big crop, big... baby. Show me the money. Mm -hmm. Show me the big crop. Show it to me! Yeah! Yeah! We got nice. it! Leave hey, start for it. it. There, might be, there might be a challenge for it. Still. Yeah, it I doesn't, We don't have to harvest it. We gotta go, we gotta go. We're gonna find five more, like five more copper bars. Uh, okay, we're putting in the, the pickaxe upgrade, right? Wait, are, is that happening today? Yeah, because I have to harvest all these melons anyway. Okay. Shit. And I'm gonna route the... in a... Oh, I can't go to Vincent today. Shoot. Okay, it's fine. Still do, do, what's still up, do what's it What's up with Vincent? I wanted to go give him a gift, but just, no. just put in the pickaxe today. Wait, why and can't you? Because I've do already we... given two gifts in a week. Oh. oh Alright, we just we just harvested the you starfruit, mean... Mr. Nate. Mm -hmm. Sweet. You got the starfruit? Yep, yes. we did. We just cool. harvested it. Do we want to mm -hmm. hit this melon? 
No, uh, let's save. We're saying let's save it in case uh, there's some sort of giant. Crop still, challenge. what's what's the luck? We don't want to wait until bad luck tomorrow. Today. Yeah, we really need to get the bottom of the mines. That's important. Once this pickaxe is done. Yeah, but I think we should wait until the copper pick is done. Yeah, we can mm -hmm. do it, Paul. Ah. We need to. Somebody needs to go to Robin's tomorrow for some more preserved jars. I can go. I guess we won't have the coal, but that's fine. Someone needs to go to Marnie today. Why? Like chickens, just get it done. We have the money. I can buy it today. Okay. I'll go. I'll, I'll do, do it today. It. I can do it. As long as Marnie's here, someone check her schedule real quick on the wiki because Marnie is really inconsistent. Saturday. I got it. She's there Saturday. Okay. She Damn, Monday level eight farming. It's fine. I'm not even mad about it. Yeah, it's okay. So we will have to get you level ten. Now. Is someone going to Marnie's already? Yeah, I'm going. I'm going. Okay. I'm, I'm waiting till not for cleanse. Uh, if y'all are waiting, I can go CC a bit. That would be great, actually. Wait, what's in the CC? A few bundles. He's just clearing out the chest. <clears throat> yeah, we want to get all the forage for winter and fall if we can, but... Yeah, because we need to get that uh, silver... Yeah, golden gold axe. Scythe, yeah. Golden scythe, whatever. Once we hit that statue, we're going to okay, get another I'm here, so giant Just boost. buy four chicken straight up? Yeah, buy four. All right, where's I'm our coop? Points. Where's our coop? Mm, make sure name on Eric and then just whatever their names are. Eric? Yeah, just name them all Eric Barone. Oh, like, different. So I heard Sean say at the very last second before we switched off of that listen in, he was like, let's just name all of the chickens Eric Baroni. <laughs> <laughs> so you might have a loyal following of chickens on the on Pam's EM's farm right now. Uh, <laughs> my dream come true. Yeah, of course. That's what it's all about, right? <laughs> Nice. So should we check in with uh, someone from Pieri's Cherries? They're in uh, last place right now, and they really need to step up their game if they're going to win this sure. competition. Let's check out uh, Lee Chatone right now. And yeah, so apparently there's there's some score sheet lag on Pieri's Cherries right now, and so we're going to get that figured out. So right now, score-wise, they might be in last place, but I think uh, you never know. You never know with like when these points are going to roll in who is actually in first, so... Let's, uh, let's listen in on their team now and see how they're communicating. I do want to say, actually, just real quick before that, though, I'm very impressed with Pam's Yam's communication. I think they're doing a great job where it's really like the entire team is, is really contributing to the conversation and they're updating each other on what everyone's doing. And that's really giving everyone sort of the information that they need so that that way, you know, their competitive players can make decisions better. While we were listening in, uh, Sandy's Candies actually took the lead for a short while. Oh. But uh, Pam's Yams has come back. They're again in first place with 240 points. Sandy's Candies second place with 220 points. Man, it is uh, it is oh. going to come down to the wire. I'm excited. All right, All right let's let's, uh, listen let's listen in. Yeah. Should open the things now. Open the what? Uh, the coops barn. Wait. Oh, yeah, have we bought pig or have we bought cows? No, but that's on that's Shane. Fun. That's on the 20th yeah. on Shane's birthday. Yeah, uh, so it is critical we get to the 20th. I mean, we're, we're planning to get like all the way to fall, right? Yep, yeah, everything yeah. is scripted have, and we planned. We have Abigail, right? No, we're not getting planned. We're just going to summer. It's fine. Yep, yeah, we have Abigail. We have Abigail. We, don't need, we just play out the plan. We just play out the plan. If we have time, we can go to fall for like 10, 20 extra mm -hmm. points, but it doesn't matter really. Yeah, so for 10 angle, That's it. Yeah. In, in Kent. That's the only thing we do in fall. Everything else is rerouted and it works. You got the MFX. It's still on to kill these skeletons. Since yeah, I, I have the MFX. They have double health now. <laughs> oh, God. It, yeah, that's why I wanted to do skeletons first, but I thought I need to finish the mines to get you something from it. Not for a little while. Well, it was a mushroom, but we got it anyway, so it's, yeah, it's fine. I got a stupid. Artifact. Um, there's a possibility you can chop some hardwood, and we can get the stable maybe with luck. But it's very unlikely. How much do we need? Got uh, yeah, I don't five points for a stable. Yeah, but it has nothing to do now. What what are you doing now? Uh, nothing. Yeah. How, how much hardwood yeah. is it? Hardwood. I don't know, hundred fifty something, hundred or so. Should I just chop all, right. all the hardwood on the farm? Eight thirty, so we should head over to the feast uh, soon. No, it's too late now. Guys, you should be ready yeah. to get going. Yeah, we're all here. Oh, this Perfect. is such a good skeleton amethyst. floor. Nice. Yeah. I need to go get all these skeletons. Uh, Crap. Okay, this. so it's fine. We'll be a little bit late. Not the end of the world. Yeah, it's fine. We're we actually ahead of schedule still, provided it actually started at... Yep. Is the person with actually... Abigail actually have the Amethyst? Yep. Perfect. I 100% have the Amethyst in Perfect. my inventory. Okay, well I'm zoning out. 
I saw at the last second there, someone looked like they were riding their fishing pole throughout the bus station. <laughs> That's a, a product of continuously animation canceling. That's what it looks like on other people's screens. So it looked it looked really freaky, but it was uh, Cordite doing that on purpose. <laughs> Uh, hey, so I think also just another team that we haven't checked in on for a while is Krobus's Crocuses. Uh, so as this team heads in right now, is this the Feast of the Winter Star that they're on? It is. Actually, let's stick with Pieri's Cherries and see uh, if they're in this event. I'm assuming that it means that they have a loved gift for someone, although it looks like the uh, Lee Chatone is not the designated giver of the gift. So I'm not sure who is actually given the gift, but it looks like they are going to get points for that challenge. Uh, which I think is a big one. I think that's uh, heavier points. I think that's maybe 20 or 25. So, uh, yeah, wild. Uh, I heard that they might have had an amethyst for Abigail. Ah, uh, wow. Yeah, I guess that's a, a big help, too, is that when oh, wow. four people so on the farm, yeah. The latest uh, score update looks like Pieri's Cherries just took the third place, and Krobus's Crocus is now in last place. Oh, no. So well, Pieri's Cherries yeah. is actually coming back. They're uh, 205. Okay. Um, they're only 15 points behind Sandy's Candies. Pam's Yams uh, inching ahead. They're at 265 now. Um, 265 points in first place. Sandy's Candies at 220 in second place. Yeah, I mean, that's, that is really close. Considering there's over 1,000 points, and I think a lot of these teams might you know, have a big day at the end where they get a bunch of points, this could be, yeah, that's, that is neck and neck. It is, it is anyone's game. Right, uh, who was saying in the beginning they thought they would be taking uh, 50 to 80% of the points, and we're only seeing numbers yeah. like 265 right now, so there's, it, yeah. if that's true, there's a lot of points still come in. Yeah, that's right. We'll see if Blade is correct, and uh, let's actually hop in with King Nublet then. He is the representative here for Krobus's Crocuses, and so let's see if uh, if he is any better off. Um, let's see, let's, let's just watch and let's talk about him for a little bit here now too, for a while. So let's see uh, what their team is doing. They just finished up the ice fishing contest, I noticed. They, they literally just finished that one up. And so they are now uh, sleeping and doing this method that I've talked about a couple of times and I've been unable to catch anyone doing. Every day they'll come out and they will put those pumpkins in the preserves jar and turn that into pickles. And that will let them sell for some big money. So, yeah, and they're also saving up that jade, I anticipate, for the same reason that they want some money. Uh, so that they can get more staircases. So uh, they'll probably go to the Skull Cavern. And for those that don't know, on Sunday, you can trade in Jade for staircases, uh, which is super helpful in the Skull Cavern. So we'll see. I think a lot of people might just be doing the dishonorable thing in the eyes of Mr. Key and, and digging straight down to floor 100. Yeah, I mean, just to be clear, even though Krobus's Crocus is in fourth place right now, there's it's absolutely still anyone's game. They may very well pull ahead at any moment. Um, mm -hmm. And there's all these long-term plans that we don't even really know exactly what they're going for at the moment. They might have a big plan and come in with, you know, 500 points in the last 10 minutes of the competition. It's going to be a surprise for everyone, including us, which I think is going to be really cool. So, yeah, uh, let's do a little listen-in now over with our competitors here in Krobus's Crocuses uh, from King Nublet's perspective. Right beside the uh, door. Did somebody right grab the wood? Oh. Nope, not me. No. Check all the chests in case someone put in the wrong chest. And oh, we've almost got enough stone as well. Nice. I need. Oh, I need to do a house upgrade today. That's right. Oh, God. Uh, don't don't worry about that. We're we're doing the cooking stick. Oh, okay. Good. 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 Chain. 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 I'm going to empty my inventory. I've got it. Oh, 9 o'clock. Eh. Okay, so now I have to wait a while. There's so much going on. I have to give so many gifts. I'm too popular, dude. I can't do it. <laughs> it's hard having this many friends. I believe you. Okay. Get um... everyone with the slingshot. Hold your horses, cool kid gaming. That's coming, dude. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> it's in all caps. <laughs> <laughs> It'll happen eventually, my man. Oh, leave me alone, fish. I want ya. Believe me, I am dreading it more than anything. Oh, uh, okay. I, I, hate so... the way, I hate the way Blade phrased it in our route sheet. It says, Evelyn, leave, re-enter, then betray. <laughs> betray. 
I got a change ban. So bleak. You got it? I got a change ban. Yes, oh my god, god, really? Yes. Good work, dude. Holy smokes. That's huge. All right. That's nice amazing. Did. We have to be really quick, though, because we have to get to spring 10. Right, where's Pam? Hurry up, Pam. She's coming. She's Last coming. Ball. All right, I gave, I gave up. his pepper. Otherwise, I'll be slingshotting her instead. Okay, now I need to get... I need to see yeah, one. She's on her way. She has to get to the bus. She's got to get to that bus. So a really big, uh, a really big thing just happened that you might have heard in that uh, listen-in is that Blade got a strange bun. And so we'll hop in with his point of view. He's actually in the mines by himself here. But he got a strange bun, uh, which if you don't remember, that is one of the things, uh, I guess, I, I know you were trying to beat around the bush with how you actually get these statues, but a uh, strange bun is one of the items that you get. So he's going to now take that and, and go get one of those secret items, uh, which is a 50 point challenge. Yeah. So that's that's a big deal for Krobus's Crocuses. I mean, that is absolutely that is huge. And you could hear the excitement in his voice when he said, I got a strange bun, I got a strange bun. So, <laughs> yeah, he's on level 106 right now. So it looks like he's going manually down in the mines a little. And you can see, look at him looking back and forth between his two monitors right now. That is him looking in the mines and then oh, looking yeah. at that uh, that tile sort of uh, structure that he, has, uh, that he has up on his other monitor that we talked about earlier. You can also see a, a technique that he's using right now, which we haven't talked about, which I just learned is called hammer spam so you right click with the hammer to do its big attack and if while you're doing the slam you spam left click then you can do a bunch of extra damage too so pretty much you'll right click and then you'll spam left click and also c basically just swinging your hammer a bunch of times and you can do like hundreds of damage all at once we'll see if he does it again here uh but uh, oftentimes he ends up avoiding a lot of the guys here in the mines but he, I mean, he's flying like he has. See, there's that hammer spam right there. Yeah. He's got, you know, this map basically. So you'll see him walk all the way across the level and then literally break that rock and just know there's a ladder there right away. I mean, it is hugely helpful. And it's something that he figured out for this competition too. We got the final challenge announcement in four minutes. Oh, that's sure, right. Yep. You. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys to the people in the chat for reminding me last time too. So yeah, I guess uh, he's going to take that strange bun later and get those 50 points, I'm sure, at this point. It's really just a matter of taking it there. I'm not sure if we'll get to see that live or not, but yeah, that, that is huge for that team, which we said was in last place. We kind of have the opposite of a caster's curse going on right now, where every time we switch to a team, they start doing better. Let's see. Uh, let's actually hop back with Brandigan. How about it? I think it's been a little bit since we watched him. We'll hop in with him and see how his team is doing and... Uh, how his fishing is going and yeah with those 50 points uh which they haven't gotten the statue yet but if they do that would put Krobus's crocuses into second place wow yeah i mean it, it's a cliche uh, to say it's anyone's game but like there, there's no yeah. better way to say it i mean it is literally anyone can not it's just absolutely neck and yeah, neck anyone can win this whole thing so Let's, uh, let's get an update on those scores now. I'm sure some, as we're getting here into the last half hour of our competition, I'm sure the scores are starting to change a little bit quicker, right? Yeah, so the current standings are Pam's Yams in first place with 265, Pierre's Cherries in second place with 260, Sandy's Candies in third with 235, and Krobus's Crocuses in fourth with 210. Yeah, and that's uh, before that 50-point challenge that they have on deck. So it, it's... Yeah, you know, within 25 points, as far as I'm concerned, right? 25, 30 points, all these teams. Yeah, so absolutely. That is that is huge. It, it is going to be a big last day. Uh, it's it's very cool to see the cherries uh, in second place, and they were lagging way behind all the rest of the game, and now they've pulled ahead. Or mm -hmm. I mean, not in first, but they're doing really well now. So that's cool. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's uh, let's see uh, what. Sandy's Candies is talking about right now. Let's do a quick listen in. Things yet? No. Gift, coffee to Harvey while working complete. I was hoping to get some extra stuff or whatever. Okay, well, we better hope that we get a couple drop shafts because I don't have all the Finish. staircases. Oh, how, how, how short are you? Uh, like 15. Okay. That's fine. I just need like two or three drop shafts. I'll get enough freebies. Okay. You got this. 
Um, does anyone remember how many skeletons I killed before? Chat, it was eight, right? No. <laughs> Chat, time to shine. Chat. Nine now. Why not grab those 600 stone? We need it for later. For oh upgrading God. stuff, and I'm not buying any more stone. There we go. Excuse time me? to be unworthy. No, not 13. It has to be just me that killed them. I don't think I killed 13. I think you're... I don't know. Yeah, you it sounds, quite like, a it sounds like a lot. I should have killed that mummy. I gotta be careful about mummies. Oh, it'll tell us when we get 50, it'll pop up. Yeah. I'm fast. Fast as frick, boy. Oh, wait, do we already have the community? Uh, what can I do? Oh, I can buy crab pots. That's what I need, that's what I need. Two more? He should be working. We already have the urchin. We don't need that. I think we have all of this. Yeah, we do. Yeah, he just got level 120. He finished it. Oh, did we say that? Yeah, I got 120. Sorry. Come on, Claw. I got two from him. Let's go. Nice. Hey. I need one more. Nice. I need one more. Diamond. So yeah, Sandy's Candies making their uh, making their way along the beach, doing pretty good. Um, yeah, impressive stuff. Eric, uh, were you listening in right there, or were you doing some background stuff? Uh, doing some background stuff. Yeah, of course. Uh, so yeah, uh, again, like I just I can't stress enough. Oh man, I missed the challenge. I got to give them a new challenge in. Um, I can't stress enough how how close this is. And to emphasize this yet again, we're gonna get into this last challenge right now which I'm going to give to all of our competitors. The final 50 point challenge is going to be to change your appearance at the wizard's tower. And so there's some requirements for that, but all of those, like, I think you can do that within half an hour. Uh, so should be, uh, should be interesting to see if any teams can last minute change their route up and get that 50 point challenge. Interesting. So I think, so uh, a yeah. score update, and this is pretty big. Pieri's cherries has uh, moved into first place with a commanding lead. They have 330 points. Uh, Pam ZM's in second with 265. Wow. Yeah, they got a lot all at once there, huh? Yeah. Still, Jeez. no one seems to have gotten the uh, 50, any of the 50 point challenges yet. Uh, yeah, I guess with the exception of the one team that like has it, but is has not yet, you know, locked it in. So. Yeah, man. Oh, this is uh, this is coming down to the wire for sure. Uh, so with with that, I'll also just break down sort of what the requirements are for the last two challenges I mentioned. So you remember the fourth challenge was to craft a mini jukebox, and so that challenge uh, you have to get to a certain heart level with Gus. I think it might be five hearts. So it's a pretty substantial chunk of hearts, but definitely doable. And now to change your appearance at the Wizard's Tower, I think you have to get two or three hearts with the Wizard as well. So. Um, they're gonna see, uh, maybe they can go out of their way, get some, get some love over to the wizard, and then it just costs 500 gold to change it. So that's, that challenge is really, you know, get two or three hearts if, with the wizard in disguise. If I was them, yeah, I'd be, I'd be focusing on that wizard one. I mean, the wizard is actually pretty easy to befriend. Uh, I think you can give him, like, void essence or something, mm -hmm. which is readily available. Yeah, I'm sure they'll have a ton of that. There's also, you know, that first Junimo Kart challenge, get the most points in Junimo Kart out of any other team in endless mode. And we might see some competitors going for that at the end, but it's like, do you want to go for that? You know, do you want to spend the time to do that when it might be worth zero? Do you want to like, just go for it to throw your name in the ring? Like, yeah, what is, uh, what's the strategy that you think people are going to take? I don't know. I think I would probably you know, be asking around the team who's, you know, which one of you do you think is the best at Junimo Kart? Have them just take one day and go go to the saloon and, you know, give it their best shot. Yeah, see, Put I think the problem, the uh, yeah, really, I think the problem for a lot of these other teams is if they go on YouTube and search how to get good at Junimo Kart, they're going to find Brandigan's video. And so that's a little intimidating probably if you're competing against him, right? Uh, people, I think, say, oh yeah, someone's doing Junimo Kart right doing now. Junimo Kart? All right, we'll switch to her then. Yeah. Absolutely, we'll switch to her. 
And we'll see how her attempt goes and if she can get a, a commanding high score. And then after that, I think we can uh, we can hop in with Sharky again and see how their team's doing. But we're going to hop back into Pieri's Cherries right now uh, to see how Lee Chat is handling this situation right now, which should be uh, really cool to see how she's uh, how she's doing. So let's switch over in her attempt. Let's uh, let's listen into her. Let's see. Uh, let's see what she's thinking as she's doing this challenge. It might be her team talking in the background, but I think it could be fun. Uh, if she has like a particularly good run and she's got the emote wall flying right now too. All right, let's listen in. Oh man, this is tense. Wait, yeah. um, did she, is Geo in a shipping bin? I don't know. Should we keep one? Pro no, it's too late for the museum. It's eight, it's five. Okay, whatever. Sort some chests out. You can use the mine cards. You can probably get there if you go quickly. That's in it. Close at five. Uh, it's in it six, six or seven. Oh crap, okay, come on. Okay. Whatever, it's fine. I got the skeleton mask moderator. I'm wearing it. I don't know if I have to wear it, but I got it. Oh my god, I'm gonna miss the museum by like five seconds. Okay, I'm gonna try and finish crafting here up to it. Oh, I can make a seed packet probably. That hurts so bad. Yeah, I have nothing else to do. Uh, I'm just gonna go to Dreamer Cart until we have to go. Uh, we, we can already go now, I think. Oh, we can sleep? Are we good, Corden? Yeah, but what about whatever. Dreamer Cart? Uh, we have a score of. 32,000. Are we happy with that? I wanted to keep crafting. I'm, I'm not at a... Yeah, no, we'll keep crafting. crafting yeah, I'll keep start crafting, a new one. Okay. I don't have okay, much I can to do, do fertilizer. Oh, yeah, I have to go. Kind of, do keep in mind it's 50 points, so it's definitely worth it. I'd say, okay. in my opinion. Sap and a fish. Does it matter what... If you guys are still doing stuff, then yes. Absolutely. Okay. Wait, wait I'll bring the seeds to the greenhouse. Um, yeah, that, like that's smart. Do that. That's, that's good. Oh, a cheese press. Do we have hardwood? Um, uh, yeah, we have like 100 in the chest. Go. She's press. I also need a copper bar, which I should have had. Yeah, I made that. There we go. That's... We I put in a, Moderator, yeah. I finished 30, 30 crafted items. Hey, are we sleeping then? Should we finish our Juno Makar run? Uh, and sleep? Yes. And is she still going? Yeah, we're both still going. We're both on um, decent runs. Okay, I'm just gonna sleep. Uh, I'm gonna run down to the south cabin, I guess, just for. I'm just sorting chests. It's actually not a bad thing to be doing. Yeah, good use of our time, okay. guys. So. Uh, do you want to start like shipping stuff? Oh yeah, that that's a good idea. You you should do that. There's you you can do so much stuff uh, while while we are you know, recording. Like, I'll ship all this stuff that we've gotten. Yeah, she's doing her high score. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. She one. is on a run right cool. now. We're going to keep the listen in live while Eric and I end up watching this, but I've never even been on this level before. Holy yeah, emotes. Run. I'm going home. Okay, I'm going to finish this one, and then we'll call this our high score. Yeah. Okay, oh, 41,000 is what, what was that? Have. Just over 41,000, I think. Let's we'll have to get an instant Still, replay that's, on that. But... That's pretty good. I mean, if Pieri's Cherries oh, can, uh, you know, get that 50 points for the Junimo card thing, I mean, they're going to be in a very good position. They're still in the lead with 385 points. Pam Cam's in second with 335. It's it's really cool that Pieri's Cherries have made this big comeback. They were in last place for most of the tournament. They were kind of the underdog team. So it's uh, it's really cool to see them get into first place here. It really is cool. And, and I think that's a good run. I mean, you had just said, what's your high score on Junimo Kart, though? Uh, personally, I've gotten, I think, 100,000 plus, 100-something thousand. Eric, I don't know if you realize, you're cracked at the game that you made. Like, in every way. I think the maze that we did and the speed running and the Junimo Kart, like, why you, you are good at the game that you made. That's, that's well, fun. Well, I have a lot of uh, experience, you know, just testing out the game as I'm making it. It's a yeah, lot of absolutely. hours. All right, hey, we're gonna switch over to Sharky in just one second here after I get his point of view pulled up. Um, but yeah, so I guess if like 41,000, we'll need an exact replay potentially. Apparently her high is 128,000, which is wow. just commanding. I mean, that's well, well higher than my score. If you're from my that's chat, awesome. don't talk to me about it. They'll make fun of me. <laughs> but yeah, okay, let's, uh, let's switch it on over now. Let's see if we can get this going. 
Uh, an interesting thing right now, uh, Krobus's Crocuses and Sandy's Candies are tied for third place with 255. Oh, wow. I don't think I don't think we ever considered what would happen if a team gets uh, oh, tied with the points. Right I now. have a couple of tiebreaker challenges, and now that we're getting into this last, there's 20 minutes left in this competition, guys, so we're, we're getting down to the wire, and it's probably a good time to talk about it. If any teams are tied, I have a couple of additional tiebreaker challenges where teams will get the challenge, they'll hop back into their farm, and then it will be, okay, three, two, one, go. First team to complete the challenge is going to be the winner. So uh, the produce and forage shipped makes it less likely that there will be an actual tie because um, it's one point for every unique piece of forage that you sell or every unique item that you ship. So it will be less likely that uh, that's the case, but still, potential, still potentially possible. So we do have that backup in place uh, for a little tiebreaker, but... Yeah, I mean, it, it is neck and neck right now. Absolutely crazy. All right, this is uh, this is Sharky's point of view. Uh, do you want to go ahead and give a little listen in to Krobus's Crocuses and see how they're doing? Sounds good. All right. Do you want me to oh come to the God, mines today, dude. Blade? Or for skeletons or no? No, we're, 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 no, we're about to go sleep. Sleep, okay. I'm going to put this in then. Right, Bond and Greenhouse. Okay, okay we've um, got a. Omni Geodes were absolute booty, but that's fine. Oh, we don't have a coop yet, do we? There we go. Should've, should've, should've the wallpaper the is up. Jojo wallpaper, done. Alright, I'm gonna yeah. keep working on my Geodes. I thought you said we had a coop, I was going to buy animals. <laughs> Since we have this time that I'm using to do Geode stuff, someone should like go to Hat Mouse. There's a lot of stuff we could be doing right now. Yep, I'm going to Hat Mouse right now. I'm already Perfect. halfway there. I'm trying my luck to get this 15 inch fish one last time. We, we're gonna yeah, need to we're gonna need to build another building in in winter. Yes, we will we will. This is the worst luck I've ever had with geodes. Oh my god, that's seven in a row. That were that were all like rocks and copper ore. Oh okay. boy. I'm back on the farm, I'm gonna go sleep. Okay. Twenty minutes left. Is everyone all right, else? Lucky bow purchased. All right, that's another challenge. What's, okay, lucky bow. Let's get these bits into the greenhouse. Sorry, from the, from the museum that we- On the 23rd, get the bits into the greenhouse. I'll go by the coop. I have a star fruit in my inventory from the, from the museum that we can place to grow in the yep, greenhouse. Yep, yep, yep. And then, just, I still have some geodes left. I just, I was told to come straight home. So I just kind of- Yeah, we're, we're going to do that another day. Okay, yeah. come on, let's go. Okay, so what's the plan now? Looking forward. Sleep until the 25th, I guess? Sleep until the 23rd. Who's not asleep? 23rd. Come on, I'm asleep. I don't, I don't think we're getting out of Windsor. Sleep until the 23rd, get the get the coop going. Yeah, We should agree. have time for the Windsor Star, and then we'll buy our animals. Okay. Okay. Alright. Come on. Right, when, when you're building the coop, move the greenhouse. Yep. Yeah. Okay, whoever's doing stuff with the greenhouse, is anyone going in there for any reason? Oh, so yeah, we're going yeah. to get the beast down, we're going to get the star fruit down. Okay. Okay. We're, we're still going to try to get... Yeah, we're still going to try to get, get uh, the pre down. Like, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Good. Come on, boys. We're so close now. Let's keep going. Yeah. We're not going to get any of those 50 point challenges, are we? Yeah, not one. I know. I wonder if anyone did. Yeah, they're very hard. <sighs> they was all super not, like grindy. It's not, yeah, it's not that they're hard. It's that they're they they're take a lot very of luck time. based. And so time's limited as it is. Okay, greenhouse stuff. But okay, so today. Hi, Evelyn. Got a garden pot. I don't care. <laughs> you just hit it with a slingshot. Now she's like, there we go. I got a potato in the mail. <laughs> and we are back again. Wow. That that was uh, that was some good stuff coming from from Thurm and Sharky. Of course, you could see them. So I think Thurm ended up completing a challenge when he was cracking open geodes as well. So that was uh, that was pretty solid stuff that we saw from him. So yeah, uh, we're gonna hop in now with Habu. We're gonna see how he's doing right now, how he's handling this. As I think he has a pretty big day coming up. So I remember from talking to them before this competition that uh, this team's big plan was to have one big day. And that day is uh, quickly approaching where Habu is going to do a run where I think he's laddering the rest of the way down to floor 120. And he's also going to floor 100 in the Skull Cavern all at the same time. So 
pretty exciting. It's a bold strategy. It is. It, it's, it, uh, you know, we we see them in with you know in tied for third place right now, 270 points, way behind Pierre's Cherries, who have 425 points. But if Habu can pull off this late game strategy, they might shoot into first place at the last moment. Yeah, and even as we're yeah, saying think, that, he's getting some points right now for completing the uh, the crafts room. I would be concerned if I was one of these other teams because Habu is known for being an extremely strong player. You have no idea what he might, you know, pull through with at the last moment. That is absolutely true. And there are 15 minutes left in this competition. It's all coming down to the end. Let's get another score update, Eric, if you don't mind, since it is it is really coming down now. Teams are starting to, to pick up the pace a little bit more. Uh, yeah, geez. So the, the current standings tied for third place. Krobus's Crocuses and Sandy's Candies, both with 270 points. Uh, then in second place, we have Pam's Yams with 345 points. Wow, big and difference. It, and in first place, Pieri's Cherries with 425 points. Whew, so that was 270 versus 425. Is that right? Yeah, between yeah. Third and, between third and first. So like, wow, a commanding lead with only 15 minutes left. But as we say that, look who's doing a little bit of Junimo cart. And guys, <laughs> I don't know how many hours Habu has in this, but I know apparently talking to some people before this, he is to be feared in this competition. I mean, Junimo cart, the Junimo cart guide was written by Brandigan, yet they're sending Habu to this challenge. Lets you know how much faith they have in him for this. I wonder if people in his chat have been, have told him, you know. The high score, what, yeah. Yeah, what the high score is that he has to beat. Yeah, so I believe it was uh, just over 41,000. So we're going to stick with him and see how some of his attempts go here. Because again, this could be a 50-point challenge taken away from the team in first place. That's what you got to think, right? You know, this is not just 50 points for your team, but it's 50 less points for Pierre's Cherries. So yeah, just over 41K. He's already in his first attempt up to 30,000. It looks like he is he is just flying. He has so much confidence right now. He doesn't even look like he's worried at all about this, this little is whale. The this is wow. the level though, that, you know, is high risk. Mm -hmm. But it looks like he's doing well at it. There's a lot of... Uh, you Ooh. might... Oh, oh Ooh. man. Dude, look at him go. Oh, he's so smart. He's so smart. Don't let him know that I'm saying <laughs> such good things about him. But it'll boost his ego too much. But dude, he, he really used some, some good routing right there. Those bubbles are always the thing that does it. Yeah. Seems like he's already taken the lead on the high score. Yeah, I'm gonna. That's that's crazy. So we're just gonna see how high he can push this score now. I'm actually gonna turn his audio up so we can hear what he has to say about this. Okay. Giant TV in the Tell house. me when you guys are all done with your task because I'm pretty sure I just beat Juno Kart. <laughs> I, I'm, done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm I don't. I don't think any team's gonna be able to compete with this one. What did you get? Uh, hi, I'm, I'm, I'm over 50k. <laughs> okay. Are you coming back? Uh, no. Jeez. Wait. Let me. You heard him say, "I, I don't think any team's gonna be able to compete uh, with this, uh, dude." The confidence isn't well placed. Just start selling random items. Oh, so I'm fine. Like everything. Also, bring me. Yeah. Uh, and look at, me, listen to him uh, communicating with his team while he's doing this, right? Okay, there, there's a gold yeah, he's cool as a cucumber. I have to put that every single bit of my focus yeah. okay. into when Junimo Kart uh, when I do it, just so I can get to level there, two. There and yet here he is on level six or whatever this is now at this point, coaching his team to victory. Oh my gosh! Okay, you are currently Insane. Still in this is what 4,300 hours of this game looks yes. like. When do when does uh when do they close? I'm gonna die here. Yeah, okay. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, it looked like he well, knew I, it. I, I, I missed the final score. But, yeah. yeah. Seventy-four thousand, I think. Seventy-four thousand. So that is gonna be tough to beat. That might be a, a fifty-point swing. That is that is huge for his team. Man, the chat's freaking out right now. They recognize how uh, how impressive that really is. So. Uh, man, good job, Habu. All right, is there anyone else that we want to pop in with now with uh, with just 12 minutes left in this competition? Uh, let's see. Chat, what do you think? Whose point of view do we want to see? There's but only 10 minutes left. Teams are going to be flying around now at the end trying to, to wrap all this up. How about we check in with uh, Shawnee Dew? Ooh, love that. I'll pull his stream up right now. Here he is. 
the man of the hour, Mr. Shawnee Dew himself. Running around on the beach farm. I'm not sure what he's going for right now. Looking to uh, go out the bottom of the farm, though. Yeah, I feel like Habu might be, uh, and his team might be lulling everyone to, into a false sense of security with their plan that you described. Yeah, honestly, I, I really do wonder how much these teams are keeping up with all of the other uh, with all the other scores of the competitors, for sure. But we're down to 10 minutes left. 10 minutes. Oh, man, the final 10 minutes. All of the secret challenges on the board. All of the teams now trying to wrap up all this stuff that they've been working towards. All of the money that they've made. All of the, the progress that they've, you know, put towards these tasks. We're going to... It's going to be impossible for us to keep up with everything they're doing, but I think maybe the best, uh, this might be the best time for us to take a step back and just listen into these teams and hear their communication firing. What do you think? Sounds good. It's absolutely down to the wire. They're competing here for the grand prize, $28,000 for the number one team. It's absolutely crazy. Let's go and listen the, in. These see final what decisions could be, feeling. you know, the difference between first yeah. and last place right now. So yeah, let's, let's hear Shawnee and his, his team. Do you want me to ship? Do you have anything to ship? Throw it at me. I think Marnie's is closed today, isn't she? No, it's Wednesday. Oh, okay. It's Wednesday through uh, Thursday, That's whatever. It. Can I go? Open. Yeah, go. So, I'm gonna try and get the uh, the uh, golden Oh pick. no, she's in a room. What? Just wait. Just wait. She should come out, right? I thought. Marnie. Oh no, it might be like a day she goes to the doctor. She Yeah, she leaves at 10.30, so we'll get her when she walks past the desk. I'm sorry, it's just gonna be a couple more extra seconds. Yeah, just make sure you're Tell me, menu. how much wood for the keg? How much wood for the keg? Uh, 50. Okay, I've got the 50. Or 30, now. sorry. Okay, I'm putting in the social chest, or yeah, in the social chest, there's a hop, a gold, uh, iron bar, a copper bar, and 30 wood. Is Thursday yoga day? And an okra resin. I thought they'd be uh, here. Uh, I'm sorry, I wasn't I'm able go... to get Marnie as she walked past, so I don't have the cows. Okay, we'll uh -oh. okay that's fine. We'll I'm just doing do it gold, tomorrow. I got the pick. shorts, though. I got the shorts. Okay, good. That's Did, great, actually. We got the white algae, right? Let me go get it. Three hearts. It should be in the... Oh. Upgrade to gold pick. We just need to collect the gold pick. Okay. And we have... What, what do we want to do with the rest of this money, you guys think? What would uh, be the best use of this? Well, we need, let's see, what do we need to do? We need to get pale broth. We need to get... Bus? Wow, dude, Shawnee had a lot of responsibility right there. So he was trying to, uh, on Marnie's birthday, give her a loved gift and complete a quest to give her Amaranth, both of which give 250 friendship points or more. So he immediately went from zero hearts to two hearts with, with uh, Marnie. And he was also... Uh, even though this is a day that she does not work, he was trying to talk to her right in front of the desk because that still would have allowed him to buy a cow. But he missed out on that, but he did get the purple shorts uh, all in one time. So yeah, this is absolutely a stressful time. Hey, we're going to hop in with Blade right now though as well, and we're going to listen to his team and uh, how their communication is going as well. Okay, what can I be doing right now? Uh, right now, uh, grab a hoe and go find some artifacts. Okay. There's, l uh, earth wait, wait, There's the so many worms yet? on the farm. How many have we donated? Uh, not that many. Uh, wait, can we? Is there like a. Um, can we get into Vincent's room yet? You should be able to. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna do that then. I'm gonna get the statue. So, what, yeah, have important. we got the barn right now, but not the coop? We've got the barn right now, not the coop, correct. Yeah, and what animals are we buying? Just cows. Just cows. How many? Four. Cows. Cows. Oh yeah, because isn't like fill up a barn a challenge? Yep. Gotcha, okay. gotcha. Oh, these guys do so much damage. They really do. Any worms around here? Oh, I'm waiting. Oh no. Ugh. The jukes. Oh, I died. Crap. Darn. Oh no. That's for you. No. What did I lose? Darn. There's a puffer fish. Oh no. In the cart. That's for you. Don't need it. Yeah. No. Georgia. Oh no, yeah. 
Darn. Red Crow, did anyone buy the Winter Red Crow? Yes, I did. Don't need it. No. Red Crow, did anyone buy the Winter Red Crow? Yes, I did. Don't need it. No. Red Crow, did anyone buy the Winter Red Crow? Yes, I did. Don't need it. No. Red Crow, did anyone buy the Winter Red Crow? Yeah, we didn't lose that one. We're so close. Oh, we didn't want that one. We're almost there. Then we need to I'm heading to Robins. Battery pack. I'm waiting for Marnie to yeah. open a bloody door. Buy battery damn and woman. Uh, coleslaw, strange bun. Hurry up! Uh, strange bun. Strange bun. Buy strange bun. Oh, oh, buy strange bun. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> oh my gosh, just like that. We're yes. gonna look, guys. You want to see them? You want to hear them communicate? So we're gonna switch <laughs> right into Lil Simsy Wait, right yeah, now. Can we get in there? Eric and it's I both great, just said great, like we're yeah, nervous great. and we're not even competing right now. So come yeah, on, my man. My heart is going a mile a minute. Who's yeah, gonna right? win? It's crazy. Let's go, guys. Put let's the, hear from Lil yeah, Simsy. Yeah, let's hear from Lil Simsy, guys. Spam some emotes in the chat of whoever you want to win right now. All of their uh, little little logos are in there as emotes. So let's see it right now. Let's listen to Simsy. It's fine. We're not we're not getting enough hearts with uh with him. There's too many days. I mean, that's the next thing oh that we're gonna do. Oh my god. Okay. I just got the golden scythe, by the way. That's fine. Do I need I'm to be friends with him, or is it gonna be open? No. I don't... You do need to be friends with him. It's grape, right? We need like... Vincent room access. Oh my fucking god. <sighs> What's his oh. birthday? Vincent's oh, birthday, 10. chat. God. Spring, Spring 10. 10. God damn it. Almost What's sale. his birthday? Oh. Vincent's Almost birthday, chat. Sale. I can't get it. Spring, Spring 10. 10. Oh, god damn it. it. Almost sale. What's his birthday? Oh. Vincent's Spring birthday, chat. Uh, Spring 10. God damn it. Almost sale. What's his birthday? Oh. Vincent's birthday, chat. Spring 10. God damn it. Almost What's his birthday? Oh. Vincent's birthday, chat. Spring 10. God damn it. Almost What's his birthday? Oh. Vincent's birthday, chat. Spring 10. God damn it. What's his birthday? Uh, I messed up the audio. I don't know what's going on. Sorry about that. Okay, I don't know why that other tab was playing it. Sorry, guys. Let me, let's get back into it. Sorry, the audio is all messed up. Uh, I didn't even realize I was doing something else. Hey, sorry. We're going to go right into uh, our last listen in right now with uh, Cordite and his team, though. And we're going to see how they have been able to handle this situation. So let's do this. Sorry, I know you guys can't see it right now. Let's go back here and let's make it. Oh my gosh, come on. Here we go. All right, we're back with Cordite. Sorry about that, guys. Let's get back into it. Three minutes left. Fruit moderator. Did you get a milk pail? Did you get a milk pail? Yeah, I'm running down there. I'm running there now. Um, the geodes are right across the bridge. Put the milk in the chest. Oh, uh, which chest? Fixing the bridge. Doesn't uh, below behind the tree, the cooking coffee chest. Oh, I should drink coffee. Mm -hmm. I don't believe there's not a rainbow shell. Do we have enough for the Fisher Devil bed? Yes. Uh, okay. You cause... might have to buy it another day, but we have the money. Moderator, I just uh, spoke to the old mariner. Uh, oh, this is good ship and what has it. I'm just gonna sell one of everything. Yeah. 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 Except for potato. Uh, just keep a potato. That's the only get, thing. I, I sold a potato, but we have more. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I have a bucket. Uh. Uh, I don't know what all else. Probably a piece of clay. I don't know. Oh, okay, that's unlucky. Uh, I think the cows are too young to produce milk. Yep, we can't get milk. Okay. Okay, I, I have all the, the items. Do you hey, guys awesome. want me to DC or head back? I'm still uh, like, head back. Now. You can just head, head back. back. Oh, you need okay. to put the double, the official double back. Give it to me. In the me. chest. I... Yep. Oh Got yeah. It. I'm running back. I'm placing the plasma TV soon. And start shipping everything, except for a potato. Yeah, I'm perfect. I'm right I on ship, schedule, ship guys. Egg. I'm shipping eggs and... Perfect. I you ship TV, both I guys? Uh, Sorry? I think, we've, oh, I think we're good here. Yeah, we have two minutes left. We should try to get one more day in. Okay. Wait. I still need to fish up something. Can, it, hurry. I'm almost home. Give me the I'm, hurrying. I'm hurrying. I'm hurrying. Yeah, I know you are. SEC, SEC. Because we need oh, to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been hustling. Over the pan. Just put, uh, give oh, it to me. Does anybody have a hat? There is one minute left in this contest. All of our people are trying to lock in their scores here at the last second. It is so, I don't, I still don't know. Like I was talking to Eric during that listening. Like I literally still have no idea who's going to win this. Eric, what are you thinking? I have no idea. I mean, it's, it's, it's literally, we've said this a million times. It's anyone's game at this point. There's a lot of points that roll in at the very end. 
uh, things that you tally up, you know, after pencils down. So we'll just have to see. I mean, it's totally a toss up at this point. It absolutely is. And I'm getting ready to give them that final message of pencils down. I'll type it out. Pencils down, stop playing. And then I'll be ready to send that here in just 15 more seconds right now as Cordite and his friends lock in their I hope they got their last day. minute things in. <laughs> I hope they did too. I really hope they did too. And the final competition is ending in five, four, three, two, one. And that is it. The competitors have been notified that that is the end of the contest. They're going to wrap up right now. Uh, all of the competitors are allowed, uh, just to sum up what's happening, all the competitors are allowed to go to sleep right now just to like lock in anything that they sold for that day. Um, and also just to you know kind of help us keep track of the score. Uh, but it's it. That's it. It's over. Uh, the the whole contest right now. I mean, that is that was an insane, wow. an insane rush at the end that we knew was coming. Oh man, I, I still have absolutely no idea, guys. We've made the spreadsheet for, uh, that has all of the scores. That is once again private, and so you're not going to be able to see what the final score is until it's all tallied up. So here's what's going to happen. All right, we're going to have our uh, mods that are helping us out with keeping track of the score do their final tally. They're going to count up everything that they need, and they are going to get a final score and have uh, the team competitors check just to make sure that there were no missed points or anything. And then once I've gotten a confirmation from each of those people, and I'll ask my mods right now uh, to DM me the final score. You guys know who you are. So just DM me the team's final score and what team you have, uh, and then we will make that announcement. So, man, I could not have asked for a better competition. I mean, that was that was crazy. That, that was crazy close down to the wire. Uh, and we're really going to see, it, it, like specifically with points, how close it was. Absolutely, yeah. My heart was pounding at the end. Uh, it was so close. I mean, I yeah, like you said, we couldn't have asked for a better tournament, uh, a more truer competition. Everyone was neck and neck. Super exciting. Yeah, someone in the chat said, do it again. <laughs> just just real quick we'll just do it again yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right so while we are uh, waiting for our players and our our people that are helping us out to finish doing the score uh we're gonna do some quick wrap-up stuff as well so uh, we're doing that final judging eric i have two surprises just for you just in general as we wait right now and i'm, I'm gonna kill my music i'll just leave it uh, just you and I talking here. So Eric was on my stream in June, for those that don't know, and part of what he was doing was a giant competition. Uh, it was a huge maze that I made, and the winner for that competition received a custom-drawn character of their Stardew Valley person. And so it took me three months to get it to you, but I did eventually, as the winner of that contest, I do have that for you, so I'll have to pull it up so that the stream can see it right here, and then that'll also be so that you can see it uh, via my stream. So let me real quick bring this in here and do it. So we've got that for you as well as uh, another little surprise that I've got for you then. Um, but yeah, this is really cool. This is uh, done by uh, one of my mods named Riv. So thank you very much to Riv for this, for graciously taking the time to create this masterpiece. Woo, it's so big. <laughs> uh, I got to make it smaller. Oh gosh, it's covering me, but who cares? It's, uh, oh God, I can't grab the thing. Hold on. Here we go. Here's the whole thing. Here is your character drawn to perfection. So that's, uh, that's your prize <laughs> nice. for coming Thank in you. first place in the maze. Um, Thank yeah. you. And so with the Iridium pick and, and all that, uh, so just a cute little thing, uh, that I had for you. So thank you for, for being with me there in, in June. And then I have another uh, another surprise that my girlfriend M is now going to bring in. Um, and you're just going to see this live here as well. So eventually this door is going to open and M's going to come through with this prize. This is something oh, that wow. okay. uh, it was my dad's idea to do this and we made it happen. So uh, thanks to a company that custom makes cardboard cutouts, I have for you a uh. four foot tall <laughs> concerned ape character. I have wow. no idea how I'm going to get that to you, but it's, I mean, it's four feet tall. You can see, can you hold it up a little bit just so then, yeah. So <laughs> I don't oh know how I'm going to get that to you. I don't have an address or anything, but I figured we'd, we'd deal with that we afterwards. Can, yeah, so. we can uh, coordinate that. That's yeah. cool. Thank you. So just as, as a thank you to you for uh, for everything that you've done here for not just me and, and the stream and this competition. <laughs> thank you, Em, uh, but also just the entire community. So 
I will say I ordered this three weeks ago and he's been looking at me every time I walk through my living room and it did scare me actively one night in the middle of the night when I went to go get water. So um, yeah, now now I will bequeath it unto you. Does it look like me in real yeah, life? What, what do you guys think? Uh, chat, what do you guys think? Does this look like Eric? Oh, yeah. I did uh I, I did steal it from your Stardew character on that farm that we toured as well. Everyone's saying, yeah, hundred percent definitely does. Um it's gonna be sad for me to say goodbye. He's become a part of my living room decor. So uh, but yeah, I think that'll be a cool thing for well, me to have. That's awesome. Thank you so much for those yeah, two special surprises. Like it's, I mean I'd yeah. I'd like to take the opportunity too to to say thank you for putting all of this together. I mean Z did all the hard work uh setting all of this up you know i just came i kind of came up with the original idea but z really executed on it in an amazing way so huge props to you thank you for doing this everyone make sure to uh thank unsurpassable z and follow him on twitch and youtube and all of that thank you very much eric yeah that, i mean all i was doing was bringing your vision to life and uh you know obviously none of this would be here without you and uh and you're obviously incredibly generous uh donation for the prize pool and just the way that you invest in the community so uh yeah thank you again man thank you for the kind words uh, it's it's so cool it's been such a cool experience getting to know you over the last couple of months so and great getting to know you too yeah thank you uh i am waiting i'm gonna just message real quick i have one person who's kind of overseeing can you send i mean i have one person who's overseeing all of the people all the mods that are helping out so i will have her send me the final final scores yeah, I'm and, seeing the numbers going up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so I do, I guess, while we're also just, uh, while we have this time together, I was going to announce this a little bit afterwards, um, but I have another surprise. This one is not for Eric, but from Eric. Uh, thank you to, uh, because obviously, if, if you guys need a more evidence that Eric is a great guy who invests in his community, he has graciously offered to spend some time with all of the contestants afterwards, hanging out in a call and just talking for a little bit and... Uh, just getting a chance to talk. The competitors didn't know that this was a thing. I don't know if they're like frank like frantically trying to add up their score right now or if they'll even get word of this for a little bit. But uh, if all the competitors want to hang around afterwards, we will all have a chance uh, to just hang out and talk for a while. So, Eric, thank you for that. I'm sure they will yeah, get a great chance pleasure. to say some kind things to you. Oh, yeah, best it'll game be good to ever. congratulate them on their uh, success and their excellent playing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Eric, we we kind of generally talked about uh, other people attempting this challenge for themselves. Do you have any sort of encouragement there or anything? Uh, I mean, I'm all for it. I think, you know, it's kind of just, you know, I would have loved if everyone could have competed in this, but it's like just impossible. It would be impossible to referee, you know, thousands of teams. But I think, you know, people should put on their own little tournaments and you know, do the same kind of thing. And, you know, maybe if, if we do another Stardew Valley Cup in the future, we can maybe have some way to open it up to more people. Um, I know a lot of people from Brazil, for example, were saying that they wish that they could be in the competition. It's like, there's no reason we didn't have people from Brazil kind of just like, I, I don't know, if, Z, if you were aware that there was a huge like Brazilian I, I have definitely speed running realized the, uh, the, the patriotism of Brazil, which I mean is, you know, <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's awesome to see how much they care about their country and, and how proud of they are. And even just now we sure. got some Brazil, <laughs> some Brazil hype in the chat. Um, the way the competitors were picked for this was just, I picked the people that I thought were best. This is how I do every single thing that I work on. I figured out what the competition would look like, and then I decided who would be the best to be in that. And so I don't speak Portuguese, and so I don't I don't know any of the big people in Brazil or maybe around the world, and uh, this was kind of just a, a two-person effort. So uh, like Eric said, we would have loved to have everyone involved. It would have been, you know, obviously a, a huge blast to do that. So uh, that's kind of, that was the reasoning for the way we did it this time and, uh, how that sort of shook out, but there's no reason in the future, um, that, uh, we couldn't maybe expand this a little bit. Maybe if we structure the tournament a little differently, uh, to make it a little bit easier for us to keep up with. I mean, you saw how hard it was for us to watch 16 points of view this yeah, time around. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. 
and again, I uh, while I'm also still just uh, killing time a little bit and waiting for these final results to come in, I will say that um, also if you guys missed any part of this competition or if you want to watch back any of the points of view, I'm going to upload our entire stream right here to my VODs channel. It's down in the about section below. It's the uh, VOD archive is what it's called. So I upload all of my streams on that channel. So that will be there. And then in the description of that video, I will have links for all of the other uh, points of view, all, all the other points of view of people if uh, when those get put up on YouTube as well. So, yeah. Uh, so who, do you, who do you think is going to win it? Oh, man. I really think that Junimo cart might have pushed Habu and Sandy's candies over the top. But at the same time, Pam's Yams, I feel like that like they just executed so well on their on their task and they were in such constant communication that I think they did a really good job too. But yeah, it's it's so tough to tell. Th those would be my guesses though. Yeah, Pam CMs was, you know, in first place for most of the tournament. We were really thinking, oh man, they've got it they got it in the bag, but <laughs> you know. <clears throat> yeah, we'll see. I mean it, it is gonna be crazy. Uh, so it looks like all of the scores have come through and we're just confirming them all now. So it should just be uh, just real quick. So uh, should, shouldn't be that much longer now. Uh, Eric, is there anything else you wanted to talk about uh, just while we're waiting for these scores to come in or anything? Um, well, I mean, just uh, as always, just want to thank everyone for coming and watching this and uh, being part of the Stardew Valley community. Uh it's really appreciated. I love you guys. Uh, we wouldn't Stardew Valley would not be what it is at all without all of you. So thank you for coming. Thank you for being part of the community, participating in this. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I think you did too, Z. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's just it's really cool to be able to do something like this, and that there's so many people who would be interested in you know this little scrappy indie farming game. Uh, that I made. <laughs> Lots of love coming in from the chat. Of course, it is. Uh, it's all deserved, Eric. Absolutely. Uh, I will also. I guess while while it's just you and I here, and we're uh, we're looking to just talk a little bit longer. Um, I had brought up the idea that you and I could do another maze in the future. So we did a custom Stardew Valley maze that I made a little bit back in June. And I was wondering if you would be interested in potentially a round two, a little rematch again with Habu and Brandigan and M. But also, uh, Lil Simsy said that she would be interested in being a part of that too. Would you be interested oh, in running yeah. it back? Yeah, absolutely. I would uh, love to join you for another uh, maze. Yeah. A, a chance to defend the throne. That's right. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you did really good the first time too. Like you figured out a lot of those. It was it was kind of meant to make you think outside the box, and I think you just have that creative mind. So yeah, we can do that. And uh, well, I was yeah. I was really impressed with all the uh, stuff you came up with. You know, like yeah, just weird you. things, like little puzzles. When you first told me there was a lot of little puzzles, I was thinking, how are you? How would you make little puzzles in Stardew Valley? You know, but you did a good job. So well, yeah, I'm really excited you, yeah. to see what'll be in <laughs> maze number two. Yeah, I'll tell you, we've already made it, and I think it has even harder to figure out puzzles as well. So I think it'll uh, it'll be really cool, and it'll it'll test your knowledge in that way. Awesome. I'll also just say right now, while uh, while we're waiting as well, thank you to everyone who like monetarily supported the stream. I, there was so many notifications that came through. You can understand why I wasn't able to thank everyone. I mean, we were incredibly busy, but seriously, thank you guys. All all of that is just going to go right back into uh, my content and making the stream better. So. Uh, I do appreciate that a lot. I, I do also want to thank all the competitors for competing in this. You all did great. You know, even if you don't get first place, uh, you did a great job, and we appreciate that you joined and were, you know, willing to join up for this tournament. And I hope you had fun. Yeah, I, I know they did. I mean, they had a blast before the competition even started, and I'm sure that this was just, you know, the the peak of all of it. So. Uh, they, yeah, they, they were just so happy to be a part of the competition and be able to sort of test themselves in that way. So, yeah, and thank you. I'd like to also thank the competitors. There was a lot of logistics that went into planning this event to make it happen, and you guys were very patient with me trying to sort of tackle a lot of those hard-hitting questions. Um, I always joke, we have a, a channel in our Discord that we made for, um, for this competition, 
we have a channel that's just called Nerd Questions. And it was just to like separate all of the, you know, high level questions like, are we allowed to do this? Can we do that? Like, and, and for us to sort of talk through and work together uh, to, to figure out what was fair and what wasn't. So thank you everyone uh, who was able to do that. Let's also make sure to thank your moderators who oh, of kept score and were refereeing everything. That's yeah, they, they had to be just as huge. focused as the uh, competitors. Yeah. You know? Again, so much behind the scenes stuff. Thank you. A huge thanks uh, to my moderators who I'll, I'll actually call out by name right now, uh, just so they get the recognition that they deserve. So uh, Bearman001, Down with Comcast, PCG Matt, and that guy 10,000. Each sat in with a team the whole time and kept track of the score and also uh, gave us a little bit of extra info. What are people doing? What's their interest level right now? And uh, yeah, just that, that helped us out tremendously in deciding who to go for. Eric, I did get a couple of questions that came in from M from the chat. Uh, if you wanted to answer yeah. some of these, I can uh, toss them your way. So sure. uh, this one's actually probably a little bit more on the intense side, but someone said, hi, I'm a student doing a project on indie failures. What type of failures did you face in the six years of you working on Stardew? Uh, failures. I mean, there was like, for example, uh, I created a version of the mines that was like totally different. It was like a procedurally generated thing. I spent months working on that. And then I ended up scrapping the entire thing and redoing the mines to the ones that, you know, are in the game today. But, you know, that's the sort of thing that happens sometimes when you're making a game is you'll you'll be doing something and then you it just ends up not being fun and you have to be able to just scrap all of that work, you know, months of excruciating work just completely down the drain. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, yeah, there's definitely a lot of, like, back and forth when you're making a game, you know. It's not all... It's not going to always just be like a straight trajectory up. Yeah, but as long as the trend is up, you know, it's, you're making that, yeah. that progress. I'm kind of curious just myself also, like, you know, you worked for such a long time with no guarantee of Stardew ever even seeing, you know, a hundred people downloading it. So, um, and I, I think I know the answer to this already, but just sort of what was your motivation while you were in that period where success wasn't guaranteed? I think, I mean, it's never, I, I've always, you know, said that Stardew was never really about, like, making money, really. It was kind of just, I wanted to make this game. I wanted to share my art with the world. I wanted to be appreciated for what I do. Um, so, and I've always had a very, very strong drive to succeed. And I guess, like, you know, see my ideas and visions come to life. So, I mean, really, it's that. I just really wanted to you know, find success. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, success could mean many different things. It could mean the number of downloads you make or how, many mo how much money you make, but it could also just be like seeing your own personal vision come to life. You know, if you're happy with the thing you made, I think there's a lot to say for that. Yeah. But, and I, I am very glad that other people liked what I produced, but really I was, I made Stardew Valley for myself you know, it was the game that I wanted to play because uh, I've always been a huge Harvest Moon fan and I kind of wanted to see a, a new Harvest Moon style game for the PC that, you know, like went beyond what Harvest Moon did or at least attempted to. So I, I feel like I'm pretty happy with what I achieved and that's uh, that's the main thing. Do you have any farmers in your life, like actual farmers, or is this uh, was your inspiration mostly just drawn from the genre in general? Uh, the inspiration was mostly drawn from Harvest Moon, but you know, I grew up in kind of a semi-rural area. Um, my mom always, you know, did some gardening, uh, grew tomatoes and stuff like that, uh, and we did have chickens for a while. So I, I guess I have some experience with it. Yeah. Very cool. Someone uh, in the chat had also asked, uh, are there any, so I guess we, we sort of mentioned with those three hidden statues, people know about them, but they don't know what they mean. Are there any secrets in any capacity in Stardew Valley that people still don't know about? There is one that I don't think anyone will ever figure out, but it's like a, there's a secret, I guess you might say, uh, message or something and, and actually the thing is the message is not even really relevant anymore 
it <laughs> it it was like originally revealing something that's like actually not even true anymore but it's still i don't think anyone's found it and i don't know if anyone ever will because it's like extremely obscure to find it hmm. very interesting yeah that's cool uh yeah uh let's see what other questions do we have guys we can we can take a couple of them if you uh if you want to throw them our way here uh supposedly the uh, the scores are coming in still right now we want to make sure we get it right it would be a, a terrible shame to announce it and then be wrong you know so we want to make sure we get the scoring right oh yeah do you have any favorite mods or anything uh like that people have created uh i've actually never played with any mods yeah to tell you the truth yeah i love yeah, that i never have um so i mean at this point i would just say I, i'm all the mods are my favorite i'm just glad that people like the game enough to mod it and that there's a big modding scene um i am proud of the fact that you know Stardew valley is like one of the top games on like nexus mods for example it's like up there with like you know you'll see like skyrim like yeah. morrowind mm -hmm. uh Stardew valley you know so i that's pretty cool there's there's a very very large and active modding scene. Absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, someone had also asked, "Is this your quarantine hair? Have you uh, have you cut your hair since uh, since quarantine?" It's I love the uh, locks, man. They're luscious. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I haven't I haven't cut them since quarantine, but it's like also I've had long hair at various points in my life. It's not like something completely new to me. Uh, I feel like there's typically a cycle. It's like I, my hair gets long and then it gets so long that I end up cutting it and then I, I don't want to get a haircut for a long time again. Yeah. And so I let it grow out. <laughs> so I'm kind of near the, I think the peak of my cycle here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, how have you, uh, how you been spending your time recently here the last couple of months? I kind of asked you that in June a little bit, but just, uh. Any particular projects or any other way that you're spending your free time? Um, yeah, I've actually been working on my next game. That's mostly what I've been doing. Yeah. I, so, I won't make you say I, any more than that if you don't want to. <laughs> well, I'll just say that, you know, I may announce it fairly soon, what it is. No one knows at this point. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's another... What I will say is it's another kind of pixel art game um kind of a top-down perspective similar to stardew valley um and it, in some ways it is kind of similar to stardew valley but it's also it's not a farming game to say that it's something different all right yeah the chat just about exploded when you said that so they are <laughs> they're very excited for whatever you know comes out of whatever comes out of your mind here what is uh, what's your favorite skill out of the five in Stardew? Um, hmm. Either mining or fishing, probably. Hmm. I see a lot of people in the chat saying, uh, "Is there a connection to Witchbrook, or is it the Wizard game?" No, that's not true at all. That's something that I don't know. Well. There's kind of a misinformation that went out there that somehow I'm making a game called Witchbrook or that I'm involved with that. I have nothing to do with that game. I've never been involved in it. My next game is not a game about witches or anything like that. So it's not a magic school game. So mm -hmm. that's a that's false information. So if you see anyone saying that, uh, it it would be a favor to me if you would correct them. Because I, I would like the truth to be known that I'm not working in that with that game. I'm not involved in that game in any way. But hopefully yeah. when I announce my next game, it'll uh, kind of dispel those rumors a little bit. Yeah, I think that'll, that'll probably help out. And uh, I'll also ask, when you were coding Stardew, was there any particular thing that like you knew what you wanted to do, but it was just a coding nightmare? Um... Well, hmm. I don't, I wouldn't say so. No, I think everything that I wanted to do, I mean, I guess the mines that I mentioned earlier were, they were kind of, like I said, procedurally generated and it ended up being a bit like of a mess. There was a lot of bugs with it. Cause I mean, it's, it's 
quite difficult to make a procedurally generated compelling world. Um, so, I mean, that was definitely difficult. I, I had a vision for it that I maybe wasn't able to necessarily achieve. And then I just made the decision to cut it and do something else. But hmm. Very nice. And guys, just in case uh, you're rolling in here onto this stream, we are working on tallying the scores. Sorry, this is like the hardest part of this competition, but we have a, a bunch of people hard at work right now to make sure those are all right. So I, I promise as soon as we get the news, we will uh, we'll tell you. Uh, it shouldn't be that much longer, though. Have you uh, have you seen there's a mod that allows you to marry the other non-marriageable people? What do you think about that? Like Linus and Marnie and Robin and all them? <laughs> <laughs> uh i yeah i think that's pretty cool it's like honestly i would love to have like almost everyone be marriageable but it's just a ton of work that's mm. the main reason why i haven't added more people you know it's like I, I don't know if these mods like if they add all the events and everything but it's like to have someone become a marriage candidate that means i have to add like well, a lot of dialogue and at least two more events. Um, and those events take a lot of time. Like, it, it may seem like it's not that big of a deal, but they, they take a huge amount of time. Um, and then there's just a lot of other stuff. Like, you have to make the spouse room. You have to, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. There's just a lot to it. So it's like that, that's kind of the reason why I haven't just added more marriage candidates but i mean it's something I, there's no like reason why i'm opposed to having more i think it'd be fun yeah I, again it's it's finding that balance like i think you can't have everything in the game right or else it will never come out you know but i yeah. think uh, i think you did a really good job finding that balance of you know I, there's 12 options like there's, there's definitely more than enough people to uh <laughs> you know whatever you're looking for you'll yeah. find someone who fits that I have a couple. If there if there's ever any more marriage candidates added, I have two in mind that I'm thinking of, but um, we'll see. Existing at this point, I'm not new. Yeah, yeah, existing. Yeah, I don't think I would add a. Sure. I think there's enough people that are or enough NPCs that could be turned into marriage candidates that already exist, rather than me adding whole new people. But mm -hmm. um, I don't know if. Uh, I'm not even. I'm not saying there's just going to be uh, another Stardew Valley update. I don't even know at this point. You know. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I am focused on my next game. So we'll see. All righty. Hey, Eric. Can I tell you something exciting? Yeah. We've got the final scores. Oh wow. I'm okay. going to send them to you in a DM right now, and uh, the way that Eric and I agreed that we would display this is we're going to go fourth place. We're going to read fourth place first, then we're going to read third place, and then we're going to read first place because that is the most exciting way to reveal it. So uh, I just DM that to you. So you'll be able to okay. see the list. Uh, yeah, dude, take it away. All right. Um, so one moment. All right. So in fourth place, with 466 points, are Crobus's Crocuses. Ooh, still, still a great effort, though. Still an absolutely great effort. So, yeah. Okay, now in third place, with 519 points, Pam's Yams. Pam's Yams. Oh, I had high hopes. <laughs> So it's down to between Sandy's Candies and Pierre's Cherries for first place. Um, oh, boy. Drum All right, roll, so, please. Yeah, drum roll, please. Uh, first place. Sandy's Candies. Yeah, Sandy's Candies. <laughs> 661 points. Wow, 661. Oh, my gosh. They killed it. They absolutely killed that thing. Wow. Pierre's Cherries, pretty close behind with 597 points, but it looks like Habu and his team, with their strategy of that last minute, uh, you know, cash in on all those points, seemed to, to pull through.
That was worked huge. Out. That was absolutely huge. I mean, that was their plan all along, and it worked out for them. So, yeah, Sandy's Candies, of course, comprised of Habu, Brandigan, Lil Simsy, and Fuzzerino are walking out of here in first place with $7,000 each. That is absolutely crazy. Oh, so, and congrats. Yeah. Wow, that, that is huge. So well deserved. Every single person fought so well. And uh, it, it was so close even until the end. But then you look at that, and each team was separated by like 60 points. So it's amazing how, you know, even though it was neck and neck that whole time, there were some teams that really did pull ahead throughout. That was really fun. That was a great competition. Uh, that, that was so awesome. Eric, I can't thank you enough for making this happen. And I'm sure you're going to hear plenty of that over, you know, the next few weeks. Guys, everyone tweet at Eric right now. I, I'm sure he loves that. Just like tweet at him. Thank you. <laughs> All capital letters. Just let him know how awesome this event was so that he can uh, see that level on his timeline. And also, I mean, you can read the chat right now, man. I mean, you can see how many people are, are just here live that, that really enjoyed this. And of course, the competitors, man. Thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, just providing that for them. And uh, such an awesome opportunity for so many people that really do deserve it. Yeah, thanks again, everyone. Uh, this was really fun. It, it was a big success, I think. Mm -hmm. So who knows? Maybe there'll be another Stardew Valley Cup in the future. We can do it again. Yeah, I would love to. I this is like the most stressful two weeks of my life, but I'm willing to do it again if uh, if you want to run it back. So, <laughs> man, Eric, I can't thank you enough, guys. This is our uh, final goodbye. Remember, competitors, if you want to hang out with Eric, we're gonna be in our uh, Discord channel after this, so you'll be able to uh, to hang out and just talk with the guy who made Stardew. But Again, guys, thank you. I'm Unsurpassable Z, and I was joined today by Concerned Ape, sole creator and developer of Stardew Valley. Uh, let's say goodbye. All right, goodbye, everyone. Thank you so much. It was fun. Have a great day. Wow, dude.